Oh, Hello, everybody. I see so many Hello. people already here in the comments. Hello and welcome. <laughs> I've got some of my awesome, cozy, cozy reader friends here with me today, and uh, they are going to help me with this 60 plus book haul, all cozy mysteries, because you guys know I like to collect cozy mysteries. And um, I've been to a couple of really big book sales. And because I'm actively selling on eBay now, I went ahead and just like loaded up on ones that maybe I necess didn't necessarily want to read or maybe I already had, but I could sell them. So I'm going to do first the half that I plan to keep uh, and then the second half are ones that I'm probably going to sell, but we can still chat about them. And um, if any of, uh, any of you are interested in those books, let me know in the comments and I will write it down and, uh, you know, we'll wheel and deal. So uh, let me first introduce everyone. Um, if you are from the Discord group Killing Time with Cozies, you're going to recognize all of these ladies. Um, at the top next to me is Tiffany, the Beach Bum Bookworm. She is a, uh, if you want to know about any cozy mystery author, she has interviewed them. She has just spent the last year interviewing all all of them and um so check out her channel if you haven't already and then right below her uh, I'll, i will let them talk in a second but right below her is leanne from dark roots creations she just hit 100 subscribers yay <laughs> and uh, i think she is well on her way to being a readathon creator she is on her second one now uh so we're excited about that and then next to her is storm from storm reads and storm reads a lot of stuff and you know I feel like every time I bring up a cozy mystery, she's like, oh, yeah, I've read the first one. <laughs> so <laughs> she knows a lot about the introductions of series. So hopefully when we hold these up, at least one of these ladies will have read something. So um, I'm going to go around and let you guys introduce yourselves. Tell something you want to say about your channel. And Tiffany, if you want to introduce your little friend, um, tell me, uh, tell us, everybody out there. And I'm going to get to everybody in the comments, too. Thanks, for everybody, for for chatting. Um Tell us what is your, uh, tell us what your first cozy mystery series was or first cozy mystery book that you remember reading. Um, do you have a favorite? It can, it doesn't have to be the absolute favorite and tell us a series that you are all cut up, caught up on. Like you've read them all and wish there were more. Um, and it might all it, it, the same answer might apply for all the questions, but uh, we'll go around. All right. So Tiffany, let's start with you. So I am Tiffany. Like she said, I'm from the Beach Mud Bookworm. I mainly read cozy mysteries, but I do also read some romance and uh, women's lit. Um, this is Kairu. Can you say hi, buddy? Yeah, say hi, buddy. Um, he's just, he's, yeah. Um, is he Jack my, Russell? What kind he's of dog? Jack Russell part uh, Chihuahua, yeah. Um, my husband recently took a job that's taken him out of town and he's been a little needy because he doesn't know exactly what's going on and why Kevin's not here. So, <laughs> um, so he's been latching on a little bit. So anyways, um, my, one of my favorite series, I have uh, multiple, but, uh, one of my favorite is the, let's see, um, which one I want to say. Oh, the Reese Bowen, um, Royal Spinus series is one of my awesome. favorites. And also one of my favorites is the one that I wish there was more of, which is the Southern Sewing Circle by Laura Bradford. Well, she writes it under Elizabeth Lynn Casey, but that's one of my absolute favorites. And I really wish there were more in that series. Uh, one other question I thought of, is there any theme that you wish there was a mystery series about? Have you ever thought of like, oh man, I wish there was a series about that, but I can't find it. I wish there was a series that takes place in an amusement park because I think there's a lot of ways that somebody could kill somebody. Okay. Like an amusement park or like a traveling carnival or something like that. Okay. Okay. Um, and there I may also be some, oh. I was gonna say there may be some where like one book is yeah. set there, but not the whole series, I don't think. Yeah, that's a good idea. And Go then ahead. I um I wish there was more. I know there's one that I know of right now and it's, it just came out. So the first book I think came out like November when I say just came out, but I wish there was more um, like ski resort or mountain lodge type of, of cozy mysteries. I think that's a really, could be a really fun setting. And I don't think that there's a lot of those. Okay. Awesome. All right, Lee, you want to, do you prefer Lee or Leanne? I see you wrote Lee. Either one. Either one's fine. 
Um, so I'm Leah Early Ann from Dark Roots Creations. I read a bunch of different stuff. Um, in Ways of Cozy Mysteries, the first series I remember reading, like as an adult, like not saying like Nancy Drew Hardy Boys type of thing, was the Wishcraft Mystery Series by Heather Blake. Um, since then, I've kind of realized I don't really like like the paranormal cozy mysteries, so I don't really go back to those as much. Um, some favorites are like the Jen McKinley Library Lovers and Cupcake series. Also, Coffee House Mystery by Cleo Coyle. Awesome, awesome. I don't. If, if I was just think of something else, I don't see often. I think it would be like, although I love this small town setting of a cozy mystery. I think like the bigger city aspect is something we don't see that often. Mm -hmm. And like Tiffany said, I think there's a lot more ways you can kill somebody in a big city. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really surprised that there's not maybe because big cities aren't really perceived as cozy, exactly. you know, and, and even like coffee house is a little more, um, what's the word? Gritty. Um, hmm? Gritty. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit, not, not, completely at all but a little more racy you know I think and and maybe it's because of that urban setting but I think within any city you have a community of people just like within booktube you know there's different little communities within booktube and then booktube as a whole is one community too so um you know you find you find your clicks your niches you know kind of like we have here so yep. yeah and I think awesome. that when there's a bigger city like that they do like the ones that work well find a way to do that. Like in the Cleo Coyle series, you feel like the coffee house is the setting. Like you yeah. don't feel like you're in New York all the time. You feel like you're at, you know, the yeah. blend. But, and I feel yeah. like if you've ever read, like Leslie Budowitz has a, um, a spice shop series that takes place in Seattle, but it's all about the market there. And you don't mm -hmm. really leave the market for a whole lot of it. So you feel like you're within that community. Right. With, in, you know what I mean? I feel like the right. ones who do it well are able to do that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, Storm, tell us about yourself. Okay, so I'm Stormy, and um, I read a big variety of different things. And I would say the first cozy mystery I ever read was um, The Guidebook to Murder by Lynn Cahoon. And it's still oh. one of my favorite series. And favorites of the Cajun Country series by Ellen Byron, which just finished this year. So I'm sad, but it was, the, I read the last one. So I'm caught up on it and it's ended. And the Library Lover series by Jen McKinley is definitely a favorite. Um, as for, I don't know, themes, I don't, at least I haven't read, but I think I would like to see like more like a web design or graphic design um, yeah. maybe the main character does something like that because I don't think I've seen anything like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. You know, that's a good idea. Also, I just thought of something um, that I need all of you, you guys, and all of you out there watching to help me with. Uh, we've got to finalize my book club list for next year, like this week. And I would like to find some, um, we usually try to do a mix of cozies and not cozies. And um, I need to find some good, like some good cozies that would be good for book club. I need to find a few that are standalone really. And then I need to find some that are pretty good, but that the library would likely have that are not so old that the library would still have them. Cause that's what, you know, we come up with some good series, but then the first one was so many years ago that the libraries have weeded out a lot of them. So as we're going through this, if you guys think of anything, put, you know, just put in the comments, book club recommendation or book club rec and, and let me know. And Janelle, I see you here. You, I think you and I talked about a book that was a standalone that would make a good book club book. And I put it on my TBR, but then when I went back and looked, my Goodreads TBR is so long, I couldn't figure out which one it was. So I'm sure Janelle will have some good recommendations too. So let's go through the comments and say hello to everybody. Hello, Amber from her creative corner of creation. <laughs> awesome. Which is Georgia. I hope that's okay for me to say that. Um, 
And then we got, uh, Hi, there's Janelle you. saying hello to Amber. And, oh, Scott and Becky are here. Oh, Scott's here. Hello, Becky's working. Oh, I'm so glad you could come, Scott. So I don't know if you guys have been watching. Scott and Becky have been doing a couple of videos lately about Scott's goals for next year. Mm -hmm. And he is going to be reading some heavy major stuff this coming year, <laughs> like giant history tomes and all this stuff. So um, you're going to be learning a lot. So you'll have to teach us what you learned because I sure don't want to read that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, I'm excited. Um, I think it's great. So um, that's awesome. So Amber says, how is everyone? I want to try to go through every comment like uh, Tiffany does because I'm so bad sometimes about comments. So Janelle saying hi to Scott. Oh, and Donna is here and saying hello to everybody. Thank you. Uh, so glad you're here and bookish Bryants are well, I should say Scott is saying hello. Janelle is reading. And then there were nuns by Kylie Logan. You know, I, that may be in this hall. I, I want to feel like I have <laughs> something by her. It's, yes. Look. So Janelle, when we get to the, we might, we can do that one first. Uh, is my lighting going to be bad to even show these? I can do it like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yay, that's so fun. So Janelle, we'll stay tuned. We'll, we'll do that one first. Um, Okay. Hello. Hello. There's Anita. Thank you. I know it is a great title. Um, fun, fun, fun. All right. Let me keep going. Everybody is just saying hi. 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 Hello. 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 Everyone's so friendly. And there's Ro. Hello, Ro. And Jillian. Hello. I recognize her from y'all's chats. Mm -hmm. And everybody. Everybody saying hi. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. What what happened, Amber? Um, hang on. Amber says this hasn't oh hasn't been the greatest year reading wise, but that's okay. You know, it ebbs and flows. It's fine. Absolutely. As long as you enjoy, find something you enjoy reading, even if it takes you all year to read one book. Who cares? Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I keep clicking the wrong thing. I'm so not good at chats. <laughs> But I'll get better as I go. Okay. So, yes, Ro was supposed to be here. I'm sorry I didn't um, say that, but I didn't know if you'd want me to. But I, she was invited and also Di from Di, uh, Desus 19 Hearts. And she may still pop in, um, but she didn't think she was going to be able to make it because of her uh, schedule and everything. And, and I think she said computer issues and whatnot. So uh, I did send her the link, so she may pop in later. But uh, Di is the leader of book one cozy's club so mm -hmm. she has read a lot of cozy's herself mm -hmm. um and is one of the co-hosts for march mystery madness so uh ro runs the discord group killing time with cozy's which is uh where all these ladies know each other from so if you any of you watching are not part of that group once the video uploads after we're all done i will add that to the comments and um a, a link to it so let me keep going. Everyone's still saying hi. This is the friendliest bunch. Everyone is saying <laughs> hello. <laughs> and hello to you. Paula P. Wait, I have not. I, are you the same Paula that has been around a long time? Um, I don't think I've heard from you in a long time. How great to see you. So glad you stopped by. Uh, unless, do you guys recognize Paula? She popped up on one of our chats, but okay. I don't remember yeah. which one it was. But okay. she was new to our chats. Yeah, um, I think she has been a subscriber of mine for a long time, if it's the same one that I'm thinking about. I mean, a lot of people named Paula, but anyway. All right. Everyone's still saying hello. So those of you in the chats, I know you're waiting to see the haul, but what I would like for you to do is as each, um, each thing comes up, if you have read it or if you have added it to your TBR and haven't read it or if you want to read it, or if you um, have no interest in it, or if you read it and you hated it. I mean, whatever you want to say about it. And um, anyone also, I I don't even have them sorted very well. Um, but uh, if any of you ladies here, as I hold them up, like if one of you wants to check Hoopla, and one of you wants to check Kindle Unlimited, you know, and, and then check whatever um, to see if it's available and how much it costs and... Um, you know, if the audio is on Hoopla or Audible Plus or whatever, um, 
that would be awesome. All right. So Jillian says, my first cozy mystery series was Nancy Drew. Mine too. I'm new to adult cozy genre, so I don't have a favorite yet, but I really enjoyed Apple Cider Slaying by Julie Ann Lindsay. I have that on my TBR for this month. And I also started with Nancy Drew. Um, and I didn't really answer my own questions, but my, I'm pretty sure my first adult cozy was the, um, um, the one that we joke around that shall not be named. Um, Me too. <laughs> in mysteries. Is that why you skipped over that question? Tiffany? I forgot <laughs> it. That was, I forgot it until Lee answered it, but, but, but the Hannah Swenson was my first cozy. Yeah. We joke about that and, and it even came up last night and then it's like, once it comes up, it's almost impossible to get off the topic. Um, but uh, it's just funny, but it is good. I would say if you've never read the series, at least read the first, you know, 10 or 15. And then if, if you're done after that, it kind of goes downhill from there. <laughs> but, you know, the first several I really enjoyed and I pretty really? much made on those for, um, you know, until I, until I got caught up and, you know, that before that, I mean, I think really that is kind of what started the whole cozy mystery craze that and the Leslie Meyer series. Um, and you know, the, uh, it's Lucy stone, uh, with all the holidays and stuff. You guys familiar mm -hmm. with that? Mm -hmm. Before that, there were mysteries that we now consider cozy, but they weren't called that like yeah. the, um, cat who mysteries, cat who series by Lillian mm -hmm. Jackson Vaughn and, uh, and others like Miss Marple and stuff like that. So we didn't call it cozy, but they do fit the, the genre. So yes, Janelle says she loves Royal Spinus. I have only read the first one of those. I need to get uh, with the program. I like that. So uh, Anita read Nancy Drew also. Oh, you played Nancy Drew games. Is that mm -hmm. um, like a video game thing? They have, or some, they have some computer yeah. games. Yeah. Computer oh. Nancy Drew. So Donna says that Royal Spinus is at the top of her list. Awesome. And yes, Nancy, you should try. Now, I will warn you, if you are the kind of person who wants the mystery right up front, it's about 41% in on that first book. And I don't know if the rest of the series is that way, but you have to get quite a ways in to the first Reese Bowen book to get to the actual murder. That's probably why I quit reading it. <laughs> really? Yeah, because yeah. she keeps telling me I need to try it again, but I like, I DNF'd it. I don't remember what it was, but... I just kind of put it to the side and never picked it back up, but that might be and why. I don't even think I realized that until somebody pointed it out to me because we read it for a book club one year and we got to book club and I was like, Oh yeah, this is great. It was so much fun. And someone was like, you had to read half the book before we know who got murdered. <laughs> and I was like, Oh yeah, you're right. But I was enjoying just right. her whole situation and, and everything of being, what was she like? 30 something 34th in line for the throne and you know penniless ba basically and had to rely on her brother and all that so I just enjoyed the setting the characters and all of that and and to me that's what a good cozy is about if it pulls you in and you really like the characters and you like the setting and and you can just get behind the sleuth and the family and or whoever you know that uh that to me takes precedence over the actual murder. I like to be able to enjoy the murder, uh, not enjoy the murder. You know what I'm saying? I like to enjoy the mystery of it and, fi you know, trying to figure it out and all that, but that's uh, second. Um, that's not the highest priority for me. Cheryl is here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> all right. So Rose says my first cozy mystery was bewitching mystery by Madeline Alt. I think I've heard of her. One of the favorites is Maine Clambake series by Barbara Ross and a series I'm caught up on now and want more is Jane Austen mystery. Awesome. So Robe, do you, do you read any Jane Austen? Cause I don't know you or have you in the past in, in your past life before you <laughs> went to all those pieces? <laughs> Because uh, for y'all, for those of you who don't know, Ro pretty much reads exclusively cozies, but she didn't always. Um, in fact, did you say that you like took everything off your Goodreads except for cozies, <laughs> but yeah, not your past stuff, it. right? Like, did you leave stuff you've already read? Like, just no. I think she, took she it deleted all. everything. I think. Oh, really? Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I like to leave everything on there because I just like to know my history and how many I've read and what I've read and all of that. So, um. Which is who's by what's by Laura Levine? The, the Jane, Jane Austen. 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 Oh, okay, okay. Yes, gotcha. Okay. All right. 
first adult was, oh, Death by Darjeeling by Laura Childs. I have started that series. I think I've only read two. Are they starting to show up on Hoopla now? Are they starting? I think when I first started reading her, none of hers were on audio. And now I think they're starting to because uh, Cackleberry Club, I think, went up first. And so I'm uh, well into those. And I think I saw some of the tea shop, um, but I don't know about the scrapbooking. Maybe y'all can tell me. But I have collected almost all of all three of her series. So, yay. Um, Hearts and Whodunit. Oh, this is, uh, oh, that's, sorry. That's Anita. So Jillian says to Anita, the Nancy Drew games were so much fun. I played the games for the computer growing up. Okay, so it's something that's mm -hmm. been around for a while. I had no idea. Yeah. There is somebody on Instagram that you guys should follow. She is a Nancy Drew collector. And I'll have to look up her page. I don't know her name or anything, but I follow her. She just posts the coolest stuff regarding Nancy Drew. And it's just really fun to see what all she has. She's got a huge collection. Um, I got to try to search and see if I can find it real quick. And that's another thing. I am so behind on Instagram. I haven't posted anything. I am not not up to speed i take a picture of my wrap up like my books that i've read for the month and then don't post them so it's just nancy drew collector um so follow her on instagram you might have to she's got some other stuff more recently it looks like but if you scroll back she's got all kinds of nancy drew stuff and uh, it's a it's a really interesting um page so I don't know who she is. I don't know. Where I'm a, I shouldn't say she. It might not be a he. I don't know. I shouldn't say. I don't know. But Nancy Drew Collector. All right. Um, so Breezy says, my hello, Breezy, by the way. My first cozy was the Goldie Bear series by Diane Mott Davidson. Read them all as they were released. Very cool. And that's a pretty big series, too, isn't it? I have read the first one of those. I, I thought it was a little, um, I don't know, the whole, the way they handled abuse. I thought they kind of like swept it under the rug a little bit. But, um, you know, maybe you can tell me if it gets better. Like, does that that abuser, does he ever get his justice? Um, and you still, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> she said she still plays Nancy Drew sometimes. Um, Ro would like to see more farm and country, country living, cozy mysteries. She, she's become a big theme of them, a uh, big fan of that theme lately. I know there are some. Have you been reading the Stacey McLaughlin ones, I think, Ro? The, um Blossom Valley. Yeah. That was kind of a farm, farm one. I'll try to think of some others that uh, you might enjoy to recommend later. Not that you need any more on your TBR, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Donna says, I think the first cozies I read as an adult are The Cat Who, Lillian Jackson Bra, and Aunt Timothy with Nancy Atherton, both of which I have reread the first ones and now catching up. So yeah, Donna and I have attempted to read some Aunt Dimity together. We did buddy read one and then she gave up on me and finally read a couple more. But I think uh, Aunt Dimity is going to be my A book for um for next year. Nice. So, by the way, for those of you watching, if you don't know, um, one of the challenges for the Killing Time with Cozy's group for next year is to, uh, is it, are we supposed to try to read a Cozy uh, to do an ABC there's, challenge? There's, there's one for Cozy's and there's one for non-Cozy's, so you can nope. pick which one you want to do or try to do both of them. Okay, okay. So, I'm going to do Cozy's and... Um, because I'm crazy. I'm going to try to read them in order. So I'm going to, because I need to read Aunt Dimity anyway. So I'm going to read Aunt Dimity in January and we'll see how it goes. I might not be able to, but I'll try. Um, Cheryl says, I think the first cozy I read as an adult was Joanne Fluke book. Not sure. And Cheryl, I know Cheryl doesn't necessarily read things in order. So she might've picked up, you know, book 15 or whatever, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is a personal preference. So yeah. awesome. Um, Nancy says first probably was Agatha Christie and Goldie Bear was an early one. So yeah, that, I think Gold, the Goldie Bear series has probably been around as long as the Leslie Meyer series. Um, yeah, it was like early nineties as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. again, that was kind of before cozies were really called cozies. She is caught up on the Secret Book and Scone Society and want more of those. I think I've read the. No, you know, I always get. I want to get that mixed up with the. Um, what is that murder mystery retreat? The uh, Ellery Adams. The story Temple. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's different. So I've read that one. I had not read Secret Book and Scone Society. 
That's like the only Ellery Adams series I haven't read yet. Okay. It's a secret book since Scone Society. So, um, is this, uh, y'all tell me uh, the first name? Jared. Jared. Is Jared. I thought this was Jared, but I wasn't sure. Um, first Adult Cozy was Mrs. Murphy by Rita Mae Brown. I still need to read one of those. And Rhea says, besides Nancy Drew and Agatha Christie, when I was younger, I think my first was Murder with Peacocks, the first Meg Langslow. And who is that by? Anyone know? Donna uh, Anna. It is. Okay. That's right. That's that whole bird series. Okay. I haven't read any of those. Um, Hannah says, booked for murder would be great for book club. Oh, okay, cool. I got to write that down. And I who's agree. that by? <laughs> JC. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's the number four? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Casey? JC. J, like, like the initials, JC. Okay. What's the last name? Eaton. Eaton. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. So, Cozy Reader Life. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Donna says, Murder by Page One by Olivia Matthews. Okay, Murder by... Page one. If I don't write them down right now, I'll lose them. Yep. It's only one book so far in book theme. Okay, cool. So we could just start right out and be uh, on track. Um, William Kent Kruger. I've heard of him. So just as an author, is there anything by him that you think would be good or just anything by him? My TBR, it could have been. Cheryl says, I have my library website open to put books on hold. Yes, that's what I was going to recommend. Everybody that out there watching, um, you know, if you, you can go uh, old school with a notebook and write down yeah. things. Also, if uh, when I get to the ones that are going to be for sale, okay. if you're interested in those, let me know in the comments so I can uh, put those on hold for you and we can work it out. All right, moving on. Nancy, I did, I did too. Crazy. I love Nancy Drew. Working on your SAS list for next year. Good deal. I have kind of started, I have in my head some, but I have not really started writing it all down yet. And did you guys see my new challenge now to binge your bookshelves? So for me, yes, those go hand in hand because I want to binge read the series that are on my shelves. <laughs> so that kind of goes hand in hand, but mm -hmm. um, um, it's it can be, it can be separate or it can be, um, and it's whatever you want to make it. And Cheryl says, the first mystery series I read as a teen was a Christian teen girl series. I don't remember the title, but it was awesome. Very cool. Um, I ran across in my adulthood, Cheryl, I ran across one by, um, oh dear, what did I do with it? I want to say Elizabeth Bryan was either the author or the name of the main character, but it was a more like a, middle grade Christian uh, mystery series. Hmm. So it could have been, could have been the same one. I don't know. The murders in response. So all of her books are like that. Is that kind of her formula? They don't happen for quite a while. Okay. Uh, well, good Nancy. She doesn't care when the murder occurs. Um, if you think you like, you like the atmosphere. Yeah, I agreed. I totally agree. I, um, Oh, okay. That's right. She's got another, um, well, is that the same? That's not the same. Oh, no, I, I'm thinking of something else. Okay. So Molly Murphy is a Reese Bowen series. And what is kind of the theme of that, Cheryl? What does Molly Murphy do? Murder is secondary. Yay, Nancy. So Donna says, as a girl, I read Nancy Drew, Trixie Belden. I had one Trixie Belden book. Um, I've heard of Cherry Ames, but I don't think I've ever read any. Uh, first children's mystery was Mystery in Old Quebec, a weekly reader selection by Mary C. Jade. How do you even remember that, Donna? You must have a, a catalog of that stuff. Yeah, do y'all remember Weekly Reader? How fun. Do they even still, they don't have those anymore because I don't think my kids had those. I haven't seen those. No, Did y'all no, have a no. thing in school? I guess now probably stuff like AR has taken the place of it, but we had a thing, like I remember being in sixth grade, and we had a thing called SRA, and it was, um, you would go and it was like different levels and you worked your way through them. And so you would pull one out and it was just a little, like a, almost like a large greeting card, but it had a little story on it and questions and you had to work your way through them and you got points and credit and prizes for every section you could complete. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what SRA stood for, but uh, I'm sure the R stood for reading and I don't know what the 
others stood for. All right, but that was back in like 1976, and that was that was when I was in sixth grade, and I'm sure they were much older than that because my sixth grade teacher taught like three generations of um, people in my hometown, so she had probably had those for a long time. All right, Amber says I've only read two and a half cozy mysteries. <laughs> that is all right. Very good. At least you're here and you're interested. Yeah. Uh, so Rose says she's never read Jane Austen. The Laura Levine series is a humorous series, and the main character is a writer named Jane Austen. Jane spelled differently. No relation, as she always says. Okay, so they're not. Um, they don't have like. Do they have like little um, nods to to Jane Austen or? Well, I guess you might not know that if you haven't read Jane Austen. So I don't know. I'm not a Jane Austen fan. I've read maybe three or four and I like them. Okay. But I always have a hard time understanding them until I watch the movie. And then I can start to let it solidify in my head. Cheryl says the tea shop series and some of the scrapbooking are available on audio. Okay. Okay. That's good. And, and I think all of the Cackleberry club are on there because I've been listening to those. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. I did see a lot of the T ones on Hoopla on audio. So Good, good. So Donna says, not a cozy, but I read and was enthralled by The Hound of the Baskervilles as a preteen. I haven't read that one. I've only read a couple of uh, the first, like the first two um, Sherlock Holmes, and I have not read that one. I'm always worried I'm going to skip somebody. If I skip somebody, you'll let me know. Amber says, listen to and never finished for one reason or another. And now the library doesn't have it anymore. Oh, and what was it that you didn't finish? The, that was the half you were saying. Um, do you remember what it was, Amber? And oh, my goodness. Rose says, I actually just recently read the 800th Cozy Mystery. And you read them exclusively since 2018. You did take every book. I did take every book I read on Goodreads uh, that wasn't a cozy off. So you removed 400 books. Oh my goodness. Wow. And I'm trying to get to the end of the comments and then we'll get started. Um, I know that's a lot, isn't it? A lot. <laughs> a lot of milestone. Wow. Uh, you, you finished Boston Valley. Very cool. I need to find the first one. I have books two and three and I don't have the first one. Oh, I hit the wrong one. So thank you. <laughs> you're right, Amber. <laughs> you oh, you're trying to read books in order now because Cheryl was the one I said she would read them out of order. But I'm not. I'm not like mad at you for that. That is totally your decision. You know, Sarah from the book theater does that too. So some people mm -hmm. are just good with okay with doing that. So. Yeah, yeah. My sister does. She'll pick up things out of order. Um, but now I had kind of not really an argument, but a discussion with a friend of mine. We were several years ago with a friend of mine in church, several friends. We were reading the Miss Julia series and she would pick them up sometimes out of order. And then she would argue with me about the sequence of events. And I'm like, no, this happened first. You read them out of order. <laughs> you know? True. So, yeah. Uh, you got to just remember. All right. So let's see. Oh, hey, Sh um, Shalice is here. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. I think my first would either be Sherlock Holmes or Father Brown. Not sure yeah, what they would be Brown. called back then, but they fit the category today. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit ago that um, things there were plenty of cozies before before they were called cozies. Um, Shalice has a channel. In fact, I should have been saying who has channel. Oh, Cheryl, God. Cheryl has a channel and Shalice, uh, she has two actually Sodbuster living and read another chapter, uh, and, and read another chapter. Um, the bookish Bryants have a channel. So Becky Rowe read an obscene amount of books every year. <laughs> I know Becky read over 200 books this year already. Good job. And Amber, I know it is an accomplishment for sure. Hannah says, oh, you got to head to work. And we didn't even get started with the haul. Sorry about that. Um, but you can come back and watch it later. Uh, oh, what's your question, Amber? Uh, sorry to be late. No worries, Leanna. Welcome. Welcome. Susan says, hi. Your first adult cozy was Mysterious Affairs Styles. And that's uh, Agatha Christie, right? Is that a Poirot? Yeah, it's the first one, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it is. Um. You're enjoying Julianne Lindsay's. Yeah, I I have uh, that on my TBR for this month, the first apple cider one. You're going to add a bunch more to your TBR. Yep. I hope so. I'm serious about styles. All right. The top mystery I read last year was Murder in Old Bombay by Nevada March. Or is it just Nev March? I'm sorry. I shouldn't assume it's Nevada. <clears throat> I'm thinking of um, 
what's the other one that is Nevada, Nevada bar. That's what I'm thinking of. <clears throat> I call it an epic mystery based on something that really happened. Does have a sequel in 2022, but can stand alone. All right. So is that a, mer a mystery recommendation for my book club, Donna? I think I'll write that down. She said a top mystery. I think yes. She said it's an epic mystery. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, because we don't want to read for book club. We don't want to read all cozies. If they don't. I mean, I could, but there are some people that are like, not another cozy. <laughs> <laughs> Blasphemous. <laughs> I know, right? <clears throat> um, Nev March. Okay. Okay. I don't know what that is. It's a, yeah. Hmm. It's probably just a bot. Yeah. Oh, no, probably. Um, okay, good. You didn't see anything too. Good. Yeah, I'll have to go back and watch it and see. Um you weren't looking at the screen. Yeah, so <laughs> okay, good. Um, vintage Caper is a wine heist mystery set in France. Okay, I'm fun. not personally into wine, but other people at my book club are. So um, that that will go. Cool. That's cool. All right. Um, it's about an Irish woman who immigrates to America and solves mysteries with her love interest. It's really good. Okay, that's the one that Cheryl um, that Cheryl that recommended. Was the Molly, Molly something. Oh yeah. Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe? Um, yeah. So that wasn't for book club. That was the other Reese Bowen. Molly season. Murphy okay. or something. Yes, Molly Mick Murphy. Murphy or something. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Weekly Reader was bought by Scholastic. Okay. Oh, Scholastic. yeah. That's so they've just renamed it. Because Scholastic does put out some little <clears throat> little flyer things that uh, the kids can get. Mm -hmm. um, I have seen those when I've been subbing. All right. All right. Y'all are going to have to stop talking for a minute so I can get to the end <laughs> so I can start the, start the uh, chat or start the book haul. I love the mystery series. Uh, I'm sorry. I love the movie series on Hallmark of Aurora Tea Garden. And see, I wanted to watch it, but I feel like I ought to read the books. Um, I've heard the books are different from the movies. Um, are they cozies as movies? Should I read them? So anyone else who knows about Aurora Tea Garden? So I, I think, think I you can read the books or watch the movies and then read the books. I don't think it really matters because they okay. are very different. Okay. 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 The, and the, I think the cozy that, mystery books... Are a little, I would say, a little grittier than the, the movies. Actually. Okay. And am I correct in, uh, I think I heard that Aurora Tea Garden is not supernatural like no, Charlene Harris's no. other, other no, series? It's, okay. it's about a librarian okay. who solves mysteries. You know, I wonder if our book club would like to read one of those. I'm going to write that on here. And I think the first one is called Real Murders. Okay, I'm going to write that down to look up and see if our library has uh, very many of copies of the first one. Because what we do, our whole county has a co-op, and there's like, I don't know, 15 or 19, maybe like 15 cities that have libraries in our county. <clears throat> and so when we decide, it, it, kind of how we decide what we're going to read is we look at all the other libraries in the county and see if there's enough copies in the county for everybody in our book club to have one at the same time. And so... You know, if we find one or two, that's not really enough. But if we find at least like six, then at least that's enough where we can, um, you know, we can share them. Mm -hmm. So we have usually around nine or sometimes 10 in our book club. But wow. and in the summer months when snowbirds are gone, we have more like six. So, All right. Uh, they're set in the late 1800s, early 1900s. She was telling you that, Cheryl. Book series you're talking about is Elizabeth Bryant. Yes. And that was, yes, okay. So that is a, like a middle grade YA mystery series that is a Christian, Christian based. Elizabeth Bryant. That is it. Thank you, Cheryl. Forgot to add that part. Um, the Roy Tea Garden is edgy, cozy mystery series. It's on your list to try next year. Okay. Mel Max says, hello, hello, hello. We are, hello. we are getting through the comments so we can get on with the book haul. Um, <laughs> I forgot to read. What is... Oh, is it just, I don't know what E-I-R-E -E means. So maybe that was just a typo. Oh, yeah. typo. yeah. Uh, or an autocorrect or something. Uh, Hound of the Basketball next year. and going to do some Sherlock. I have, I didn't, I read the first two. What is it? Study in Scarlet. Scarlet. And then something about four. And I just wasn't crazy about them. The sign I of like, the four. What is it? The sign of the four. Yeah, that's it. So I have read before I ever read any of those i watched one episode of the benedict cumberbatch 
um, Sherlock. Sherlock. And I enjoyed that. And I think I want to go back and watch those and just forget the books. I, I, I enjoy watching about Sherlock more than reading. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I think that's going to be my take on it, too. Hello. You guys are not making me feel good because my classic for January was going to be A Study in Scarlet. So. Well, well, no. You should read it. Off to a bad start. No, no, no. You should read it because, you. Um, I mean, people love it. Yeah. Yeah, people love Sherlock. I'm, I'm feeling like, different. I'm doing it because it's like 126 pages, and I'm like, yeah. start off strong. Get one yeah. done. Yeah. Read it. Absolutely read it. And let us know what you think of it. Yeah. Just because I wasn't a huge fan doesn't mean that you wouldn't be at all. Um, so Mel Max first, uh, first cozy was Nancy Drew. You don't remember which one? I know. I don't either. I don't remember which ones I read and which ones I didn't. And I love, and then there were none. Absolutely. Uh, first, uh, it, oh, the first crochet mystery. It, probably Betty Hechtman. Maybe yeah. I have read the first three of those, I think. Um, Mel Mike says, Number nine, yeah, got that. Uh, yeah, Betty Heckman has a crochet series, she does. I have the first, I have actually a couple of them in this haul, so you'll see them in a minute. We'll get to them. Well, it'll be longer than a minute, obviously, at the rate we're going. <laughs> but, um, you know, pop in a cough drop, and oh, good, you're gonna come out. I know she feels, I'm glad you can come. So, when I see you, I don't see you there yet, but when I see you, you can come on in. And if you have to cough or whatever, we'll, we'll be fine. So you're going to get set up. Great. Uh, Murder in Old Bombay is my wreck. Oh, okay, good. Thank you, Donna. I got it written down. Thank you. Thank you. Um, got to go. I'm so sorry we didn't get to the book haul, but hopefully you can come back and watch it later or have Becky come back and watch it later. Thanks for joining us, Scott. Yay. They're, the books are calling right. <laughs> um. So the first one in the crochet series, she read half and never finished it. I did finish the first one, and I've read two more, Amber. I, th I liked them. I thought they were pretty good. It's um, not a bad series. It's okay. Yeah. The, is that the one that has the happy hookers? Yeah, the, the Tarzana hookers. <laughs> yeah, the Tarzana hookers. That's it, because they live in Tarzana, and they're crocheters. <laughs> yeah. One of the ladies is, like, kind of a has-been actress, and so she's always, you know, very flamboyant and uh, – um, Every time, like, if the newspaper wants to do any kind of a write-up, she's always wanting to, like, tell everybody how, you know, she'll tell the main character, oh, don't wear that kind of makeup. That's not going to make you look good on camera, you know, or don't wear this color or that color. So it's, <laughs> it's fun. Stupid things. That they oh, stupid words, yeah. <laughs> Um, she heard a rumor that Christy Barrett's squeaky clean books are being turned into a TV series. Okay. I don't know anything about that series. Oh, okay. So let us know if you find out. Speaking of, I know this isn't cozy, but did anybody hear that Anne Rice passed away? Yes. No, I didn't. No, I did not. Of a stroke, I, I think yesterday. She oh, was goodness. 80. I, I, I didn't know she was that old. Yeah, she was 80. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right, so we got people saying hi. Love Sherlock. Always love Sherlock. Uh, watch Sherlock with Jeremy Brady nailed it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel that way too. I'm like, I'll just, I'll skip the books. I got so many things to read. I'll just watch it. Uh, Jeremy Brett, fantastic Sherlock. And yay, we got to the bottom. All right, so let's get started. Um, let's see which where to start. Oh, I said we were going to start with, and then there were nuns. So this is by Kylie Logan, who also, I think, is she the one that writes the button box mysteries or button factory? I don't know about that, but she writes the chili cook-off and the ethnic eats series. Okay. Um, and she writes know, those two. I haven't had a chance to go through these to see what number. Um, Janelle, do you know what number this is in the series? Is this the first one? What is the name of that series? Literary something? League of Literary Ladies. Yep. So if somebody wants to be my lookup person. Number four. Number four. Okay. What's the name of the first one? Anyone? Ask me questions like that. <laughs> and this, I think, is one that Maybe I will probably. Express. Yep. <laughs> I will probably list this one on eBay. Um, so if anyone is interested, let me know and I'll get it listed sooner than later. Um, and I would, I wouldn't necessarily have to list it. I could just sell it to you, but I'm trying to build our eBay store and, um, you know, I, I will list it for like thrift books price, which is the same as, you know, that's the lowest, about the lowest you can get. Uh, it's like 
between four and five dollars with free shipping and that's the price that you get like if you go to a um like a used bookstore it's generally four dollars so um so anyway yeah I, I if this is book four i'm probably not gonna start it i've got so many on my shelves to read but i started with that because janelle was reading it so um janelle have you read the other the other books in that series oh yeah she says the fourth one um all right let me get these <laughs> oh, sorry, I have them in boxes. So um, we'll start with the ones that I am keeping, or at least that I got for me. Um, I did. I just found this yesterday at a yard sale, even after I'd already scheduled this. Um, oh, hey. Caramel Crush by Jen McKinley. I don't know. I think I have the first one in this series, but does anyone know what number this one is? This is farther down, I think, isn't it? Elizabeth, um, yes. um, we're always waiting. In oh, 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 okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're Hello. <laughs> Sorry you're not feeling too good today, but I'm Hi. so glad that you decided to jump on in. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. we can. Okay. So are yeah, you on your phone or computer? You are. Um, okay. I just was feeling left out of the hall and you're asking me questions. So I was like, let me try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. So um, this, I think, is farther down in the series, but it was at a yard sale yesterday and I think she just charged me a quarter. So oh, I, nice. couldn't, I couldn't leave it behind. And I might sell that since it's so far down in the series. If anybody. Um, it's number nine. It's number nine. Okay. okay so, okay. yeah. Um, if anybody hasn't read Jen McKinley, she's got three different series. Oh, wow. Storm and I think Leanne were talking about the library lovers. The only one I have ever read by her is the first hey, one baby. in the Hat Shop Mysteries. And I have. Oh, um, there you go. There you go. I, I found, and I thought I had these sorted better than this, but I don't. Um, these I'm going to keep because I already. I think I own book five and I've read one, but I found the first three of the hat shop mysteries. Um, man, I should have, you know, before I do a book haul, I usually go through and see what number everything is. And I, why did I not do that today? Because I guess I was cleaning, I was cleaning the desk so I could put the computer here. But anyway, I don't know the order, but this is books one through three at the drop at the drop of the hat. That's number three. Number three. Okay. Jen McKinley. What's number one? Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger. This yeah. one I listened to on, uh, this used to be on Audible Escape, um, which is supposed to be, you know, it was a romance thing, but they had a few mysteries on there. So this series is, a, have any of y'all read any of these? No. So this is about a, a young woman who goes, she's American, but she goes to England Someone in her family has died, either an aunt or grandmother, and they've left her their hat shop. So she goes to England to run the hat shop, basically. And I loved it. I thought it was really good. And uh, I'm excited to go ahead and continue. I may need to listen to it again just because it's been a couple years um, to get, you know, to refresh. Or maybe I can just read a synopsis. Um, her name is Scarlett Parker. Um Oh, it was her cousin. It says, not only is Scarlett Parker's love life in the loo, as her British cousin Vivian Tremont would say, it's also gone viral. Oh, that's right. Okay, okay. Can I, should I read this to y'all real quick? Um, sure. It's also gone viral with an embarrassing video. So when Viv suggests Scarlett leave Florida to lay low in London, so no one died and left it to her, her cousin invites her to come and help her. That's it. Um, she hops the next plane across the pond. Viv is the proprietor of Mims Whims, a ladies' catch, a ladies' hat shop on Portobello Road, be bequeathed to both of them by their beloved grandmother, and she wants Scarlett to finally join her in the millinery business. So the grandmother died and left this business to both of them, and she has just been letting her cousin run it. And now, since she had, a, I forget what the embarrassing video was. But um, she's just embarrassed. It went viral online. And so she just needs to get away from it all. And so our cousin advised her to come to England and run the hat shop with her. So that's um, Cloche and Dagger. One through six is on Hoopla. Oh, good. And then I guess this is probably book two, Death of a Mad Hatter. And yes. look at that tea party scene. Do you see the hat and everything? That's cool. Cute name. Yes. I haven't tried that series yet. Yeah, I'm excited about it. 
And now that I have these, they're on my shelf. So these can be um, part of my binge my bookshelf. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. Okay, where should we go next? So let me see if, there ha if I have any other Jen McKinley before while we're on her on that kick. I didn't get them um, sorted like I wanted to. No, I don't see any. Okay. Um, They're all a mess. So let's go with some I have on my shelf that um, I just picked up because I'll just put them, um, I'll just probably resell them. I have, these can also be part of my binge, my bookshelf, if they're on audio. This is the um, Fixer, uh, what is it called? Home Improvement Series? No, Do It Yourself Mysteries by Jenny Bentley. Have y'all ever heard of these? Um, uh, I need to see the cover. Okay, uh, let me see which one. This might be the first one, Fatal Fixer Upper. Mm -hmm. I think there's um, like seven of these, and I'm pretty sure I have all seven. But these are three extras, so um, these are duplicates, and I don't need to keep these. Um, if somebody wants to look it up and see what I number, Fatal Fixer Upper. It's number one. Okay, I just perfect. did a um, cozy mystery spotlight for Christmas books while well, I did a part one because there's so many. Yeah, I watched those. The series was on there. Um, mm -hmm. I think it'll go up probably tomorrow or Wednesday. But anyways, this series was on there because I think it's book four. is called Home for the Homicide. Mm. Okay. Okay. And it's yeah. Awesome. I'd never I've heard of that, that on my, on my shelf. So I have wall to wall dead. That's number six. Oh, okay. So they're out of order then. Okay. I just grabbed what they had. Um, and spackled and spooked. That that could be <laughs> Halloween. That could number be. two. Number two. All right. So I've got one, two, and six. And um, so yeah, these are the oh, and instead of recipes, they have home renovation and design tips included. Oh, that's cool. So I don't know what. Let me look in the back here and see what kind of stuff they have in the back. Turning a dresser into a bathroom vanity, installing a vessel sink, or as the case may be, a Fiesta dinnerware bowl. <laughs> that's cool. Stripping a wall. Wow. Um, brown paper bagging walls. Why would you brown paper bag a wall? I guess that's in here. Interesting. So, you know, if you don't like food related cozies and you want to try something different that's sort of do it yourself, or if you like the home and garden channel, yeah, yeah, the HGTV, you might really yeah, like that. yeah, that this is totally. Um, so the the premise, the first one was Fatal Fixer Upper. Uh, Avery Baker was once a New York textile designer but inheriting her aunt's old main cottage has led her down a new career path, home renovation. Finding properties, hidden potential has rewards and challenges, especially when a mystery surfaces behind the walls. So I think she starts with her aunt's home. And then once she does that, then probably each book, she's maybe buying and renovating a different home, a different house and, you know, probably flipping them. So that's cool. Yeah. And, uh, it says she has the help of a hunky handyman, of course. And so that's great. Yeah, that sounds really fun. I'm, I've had these on my shelf for years, and um, that's as well, much as I need. A hunky handyman and not a police detective. Right? Yeah, exactly. And it fits the theme. So that's great. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. I may as well get these out of the way because I did haul these all since I've done a mystery book haul, but I did buy all of the kebab kitchen mysteries. Um, I may not have the first one in here. I'm currently reading uh, Mistletoe, Musaka, and Murder. I bought these on eBay. Um, I found the first three all in one lot for like maybe $12, $10 or $12. And then I had to buy, uh, and that would be Hummus and Homicide, which I don't have in here. Stabbed in the Baklava, One Feta in the Grave, which you guys have seen. I'm just showing these for any, for the benefit of anybody else out there who hasn't seen these. On the Lamb is book four, and then the Christmas one is book five. So um, that's the series that all of us have been reading uh, as part of the Killing Time with Cozies group. Are you going to put them back on eBay? Well, I got them on eBay, yeah. I know, but are you going to resell them back on eBay? Um, I'm, well, you know, I don't think so. I am going to see if our librarian will put these in circulation because 
I've got the whole series now and I'm, I won't reread them, but our no library in our county yeah. has physical copies of these. They're on Hoopla on ebook and one library has it, the first one on CD. But if anybody doesn't like ebooks or, you know, yeah. or yeah. CDs, there's no way to read these. So I am going to see if my librarian will just put them in circulation and I'm going to donate them to the library. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah if nice if stuff. she's like, no, I don't want those, then I won't, but I'll, then I'll sell them. But um, I would like to see, you know, if they get sold. I mean, if they get checked out at all, you know, there may be other people that would like to read them. I'm going to go back in the chat because this phone thing isn't working for me. You're ec everybody's echoing so bad. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm you sorry. don't have your computer. Handy. No, my husband's in his gaming group right now. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. Somebody's, somebody's I tried. <laughs> okay. Well, we're glad to see you. Yeah, I'll see you guys back in the chat. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, someone's leaving me a Voxer message. Sorry. All right. Uh, where did you? Oh, so let's um, let's do an author that uh, some of you guys love. Here is Lar Bradford. This is Yay. just plain murder. Um, oh, Storm, have you been reading the, the Amish ones? I know Donna has. Donna, do you yeah, know what number yeah. this one is? I know that's one I've I haven't read yet. yet so. I've read um, the whole series. Do you that's remember? Number six. number six. Okay. I have. I went to number five. Like I couldn't find number five forever, but I finally got a library like Overdrive oh. that actually has that one. So I'm going to, that's going on next year's. I want to finish that series up. <laughs> Awesome. So this will be on your series about series. Yeah, yeah. So this is a good series for Amish in April, the Laura Bradford series. I haven't started those. I know Donna from studio in the library has, um, has read some of those. Oh, so Donna says mm -hmm. we use brown paper bags to make art journals. Okay, oh, wow. cool. But this was, that book was talking about putting it on the wall, I guess, as some sort of wallpaper. So I don't know. It'd be interesting. I'm wondering um, if they use it for some sort of texture, not actually like put it on the wall. Probably. Like maybe I, I think some people like they paint and then they hit it and it makes a texture. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Maybe it's like something like that. Um, and I wanted to tell you, Elizabeth. Um, so Laura Bradford just put out a brand new series, um, Friend for Hire. The first one's called A Plus One for Murder. Okay. I interviewed her, but she's going to come back to the channel on um, awesome. January 9th awesome. um, to talk about very her good. new book and stuff. Very um, good. On your channel. Very good. Very good. Yes, she's. That'll be so, Yeah, um, that was a great interview with her. Um, so I realize I've been missing. Y'all need to remind me to uh, hit the comments. Um, so she said the one I read it was a cute read. Which one did you read? Was it Mayhem at the Orient Express? Was it that one that uh, Shalice okay. is talking about? I think. Um, so yeah, I start skipping around and then I miss your newest cozy obsession is library lovers. Yeah. Um, some of these ladies have been reading that one too. That's awesome. Uh, I've read eth oh. ethic, is it ethnic foods by Kylie Logan. Liked it a lot. Very it's a good. good. Fun. Um, she, you just put, Cheryl just put some of her books on her for later list. So same here, Breezy. I listened to Close and Dagger, um, because whenever Audible had their Audible Escape package, they had uh, challenges to read a book from every different category. So I picked that up from for like the mystery category, and I just didn't get any farther with it. Um, yeah. So Janelle, love the title in that series. Want to try that someday? Um, but library best titles ever. Oh, oh, best titles ever in um, in the series they were talking about. Okay, good. And so I guess she had, to leave. she had to leave. The family seems to think that canned corn and canned pears isn't a good enough dinner. Whatever. I mean, feed off the books. Uh, awesome. Um, her sense of humor is so fun. You guys need to go check out her channel. Um, she has a homeschooling channel uh, that she's had for a long time. That's got a huge subscriber base, Sodbuster Living. And then her and her daughter started and read another chapter. Um, and they read books together and talk about their books and stuff. She has a daughter who's either high school or middle school. Well, and that's cool. so, yeah, you should check her out. Uh, she said, she's got to go do something for dinner. Awesome. And then that was where I left off. Okay. Recently started Sarah Grove's home repair series. So I want to try more. Um, <coughs> and the home repair series that I showed is on her TBR. Okay. La oh, you found Laura Bradford's books yeah. in large print. Good deal. Good deal. 
Okay. So I'm just going to grab one and we're just going to go for it. So this is a, an author I have not read. This is an old one and I believe she's a British author. I have a duology by her, but, and both of them are kind of a cat related. This one, I don't think is related to those. Um, the one I first one I ever had, the author is Marion Babson. Um, the first one I ever had was please do feed the cat, but this is murder at the cat show. And try to get it where you can see it. Um, it's very short. Um, and That's this really is, is British. Is this a standalone? Number two. Yeah. Number two. Okay. Of what series? What's it called? The Perkins and Tate Mysteries. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. It's, um, in here, it shows some of her other books, but I don't know if these are from a different series or just other books by her. Um, it says Mrs. Oh, I can't even say that name is the overbearing organizer of London's prestigious cats through the ages exhibition. And then it goes down through and tells the character names and stuff. So nice. I'm, nice. I'm wondering if the overbearing organizer is the one who gets murdered. <laughs> the guess. Right. Oh, I didn't even notice. Okay. So here's the cat in the cat show. Can y'all see behind it? There's like fierce looking tigers behind it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so I have not read anything by her. This is a series that I have collected all of in hardcover, but I started collecting them for a friend whose name is Erlene. Our library had a bunch on the shelf, on the sales shelf, and she bought them. And she's like, well, I have to get these because you know, Erlene. And um, then she moved away not too far. She's a few towns over. She's over on the beach. And I knew she didn't have the first one. So I found this somewhere and I'm going to send this to her. This is the first book in the Benny Harper mystery series. My sister has read all of these. They are lightly quilt themed. Um, my sister, who is a quilter, said they're more about the mystery than the quilts. Um, but you can even see from the cover that there's definitely quilts going on. Each of the titles are a quilt pattern. Oh. And, uh, I've got all of them. I just haven't read any of them. I don't, I don't know if they're on Hoopla, on audio, but this is definitely a series I need to get to. One there are, there's like 13? 15. 15. Okay. I was thinking 13. So yeah, it's it's not a short series, but um, it sounds good. And my sister read them all and liked them. So I need to get that sent to Erlene, my friend Erlene. Um, this is the first book in the Ellie Avery Mysteries by Sarah Rosette, Moving is Murder. I don't know anything about this series, but I have, I think, books two and three of another series by her that I haven't read because I don't have the first one. And I picked this up, I think, at the big Gainesville sale. And, um, yeah, uh, I don't know anything about it, but it's first in a series. The other series that Sarah Rosette wrote has something to do, I think they're the mom zone mysteries. So they have something to do with being a mom and, you know, kids making you crazy and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, and as far as Eller, Ellie Avery, that's kind of hard to say. I don't know what Ellie, Ellie Avery. That series is on Hoopla. Okay, good. Nice. I'm looking to see. There's a big sticker right over the top of the, look at that. Right over the top where I can't see. Maybe that means I'm not supposed to read it. I'm not one to read the backs of books because I figure people can, we're all readers. We can read for them, read for ourselves. <laughs> but um, I don't, I didn't do my research to know what these are about. Have uh, Has anybody in the chat read? Oh, let's see. Um, yeah. Let me go. So she added Fool's Puzzle to a TBR's craft theme. Awesome. Um, so Amber says she didn't like Audible because you only get one credit a month and you have to buy other audiobooks. Yeah. I, the, um, I really liked the Audible Escape package because for everything that was on that uh, package, you had unlimited access to, and that was amazing. Now they've switched to Audible Plus, and I don't find that the catalog... They say, you know, it's got more variety, but it really doesn't have much that I want to read. Um, I still have it. And before I, I kind of one of the things I want to do while I'm going through my bookshelves this year for the Binger bookshelves is see if anything on my shelf is on Audible Plus so I can go ahead and listen to it and um, and then maybe unhaul, unhaul that book. 
All right. Oh, and I tore it. Moving four times in five years has uh, honed Air Force wife Ellie Avery's packing and unpacking skills. So she's a military wife. And um, that's going to be the, the premise of that, moving around and moving with a newborn daughter. It says, meet military spouse, soccer mom, professional organizer, and savvy sleuth. So. Oh, professional organizer. Okay. Yeah. There, one of y'all has talked about uh, another series. Maybe it's Tiffany. Have you talked about and read um, that other organizing series about? Um, I think that's Roe that's read that. Is it Roe that's read those? I have all five of those on my shelves as well um, that have organizing tips included. I wonder if this has anything, any kind of tips included. Yes, tips for an organized wedding. That's oh, interesting. Nice. Uh, it's just a little short, like one page deal. Okay, moving on. So I picked these up, I think at Gainesville, because my sister had given me one of these. The author is Cynthia Baxter. It's the Raining Cats and Dogs Mysteries, and Raining is spelled as in a King Reigns, R-E-I-G-N-I-N-G. And the one she gave me was, I don't think, the first one. And so I just recognized the series and the author, so I just picked these up. I don't have any idea where they fall in the series, but this one is right from the gecko here. That is number five. Five, Okay. And who's kitten who, I think, is what's under that. <laughs> this originally came, well, not originally, but this came from Second and Charles. I recognize the sticker. So somebody probably bought it at Second and Charles in Gainesville and then donated it to the Gainesville Library sale. So, yeah, who's kitten who? Let's keep, what number was this? Six. Six. Okay. So I'm not any closer to number one. I think the one <laughs> she gave me was number three. Oh, and here are two of the Betty Hechtman books. I think one of these I'm going to keep because it's, I only have, I think, the first four or five. And one of these is one that I don't have, but then one's a duplicate. Um, this is the Crochet Mysteries, Hooking for Trouble. <laughs> I would say if you're hooking, you're looking for trouble. No, um, and then Seems Like Murder. So, hooking for troubles number eleven. Okay. And oh, I don't have that. I don't think I have this one. So, I guess I'm keeping both of these. Seems like murder. Is number ten. Ten. Okay. So we got. 10 I would say if you listen to those on audio, if you've listened to the yarn retreat series and everything, don't listen to them too closely together because it's the same narrator and you'll get them confused. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because that's my problem. Because I read the yarn retreat on audio and I, I listen then i tried to do number four on the crochet and i kept thinking about casey felstein instead of molly pink that was, <laughs> was, was yeah. and i found that to be true sometimes with authors you know they'll change things just enough uh like with amanda flower and the amish candy shop she wrote the amish quilt shop mysteries under the name isabella allen mm -hmm. and I read the first one of each like in the same month for March Mr. Madness a few years ago and there were so many parallels that I was really mixing them up. And at the time, I didn't even know that it was the same person. But then I found out it was the same person. I was like, okay, yeah. So that then I made the decision to go ahead and just finish Quilt Shop. And, and I read all of those the next year. And then the next year, then this year, this past year, yeah, this year, I came back and I picked back up with the candy shop. And I've been... Um, reading those. So I just have um, Lemon lemon Drop Dead. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. I've got it checked out already. So it is on my list. All right. This is a series by Mary Marks. It's a quilting series. And I have the first two, I think. Uh, Not What You Think, a quilting mystery. <laughs> I think these are set in California. And that's about all I know about them. Um, it's about someone named Martha and she is part of a close-knit quilting circle. Not what you think is number five. Okay. What's the name of the first one? I'm trying to think. Forget Me Not. Forget Me Not. And, and not is spelled the same. K-N-O-T. Yeah, so I have that one. Uh, does anyone know if any of these are on Hoopla or anything? I know the first one is on Kindle Unlimited. Okay. Cool. On like ebook. Um... Oh, I have a bunch of this series, too, and I didn't have this one. This is the Savannah Read Mysteries by G.A. McKevitt. 
This one is Buried in Buttercream. Um, I have read the Granny Reed Mysteries. There's three of those. And the Granny Reed Mysteries are a prequel to Savannah Reed. So Savannah Reed is a kid in the Granny Reed Mysteries. And um, these came first. So I'm sorry, I'm trying to adjust my lighting. There we go. Um, I'm not sure what number this is. I've that got that series that you talked about. It's on Hoopla, but it's in ebook form. That's it. Okay. Okay. You see, um, what which is uh, is which one is that one? Uh, buried in buttercream. That's number seventeen. Okay. Oh, How wow. many are in that series? There oh. is twenty-six. Oh my lad. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's like the, that's like Hannah Swinson. Okay, yeah. yeah, I did not know there were that many. Um, so I maybe I only have about half. I've got a bunch though, uh, and they have fun names like um, I'm trying to think some of the names. There's one. There's one about cereal. What's that one? I don't know. Anyway, I started collecting these when I was in charge of book sales at our um, library. And so this was before book two, before I started book two, it was around like 2013, 2014. And I didn't really have a collection of cozy mystery books, but I ran into the scrapbooking series by Laura Childs. I'd never heard of it. And it came through like the donation bin. I was like, oh, there's books about scrapbooking. And so then I just started noticing other books that had a similar look as we know what, you know, your typical cozies you know kind of have this what do you call this like watercolor kind of watercolor sort of filtered look i started yeah. noticing them and then i just started collecting them and now i have shelves and boxes <laughs> full i can't stop That's um, it's, 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 it's the whole series is on people but it's an ebook form okay all right awesome uh oh here's one more of the cynthia baxter books i thought i had three dead canaries don't sing <laughs> I want to say that was number four. Okay. Well, so we're getting closer to the first one. That's good. <laughs> All right. I may have this already. If I find that this is a duplicate, then this will go up for sale. But actually, I don't think I have it. This is the first book in the Southern Ladies Mysteries by Miranda James. So I don't know if this came first or if Cat in the Stacks came first. But um, uh, more people are probably familiar with Cat in the Stacks. I am caught up on it. I'm trying to get uh, the lighting. Um, this is Bless Her Dead Little Heart, and this is two elderly sisters who are in the Cat in the Stacks mysteries, but they are the stars of the Southern Ladies mysteries, and there's not as many of these. Cat in the Stacks is first. This one is first. Um, no, I'm Cat in the Stacks is first. Oh, it says this is first. Really? It said that came 2010, and then... Oh, I'm sorry. What? No, these, these came first? The cat and the stacks came first. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I I was talking over you and now I heard you. Okay. So cat and the stacks came first. That makes sense. And then these are like a spinoff mm -hmm. because the ladies, as they appear in cat and the stacks, they're hilarious and they're very uh, outspoken and sort of, uh, you know, just kind of let you would love them, Tiffany. They, um, the, the main character is a man in uh, cat and the stacks. And so they sort of, you know, give him what for, you know, they're like always, he has a lot of respect for them and they're a little bit outspoken, I guess it would be a good way to put it. So um, I don't know if this will work for your Mary Poppins readathon, but when you were talking about um, Leanne, about a book about women's rights, mm -hmm. this series I think is set around, um, the time of suffrage, maybe, or maybe mm -hmm. after, but there was something, one of the other books. Anyway, it's the Miss Dimple series. I think there's only five. Mignon F. Ballard. Uh, it, actually, this may be British. And I don't know, British suffrage isn't necessarily the same time frame as English, as, as American. So I don't know. British suffrage, I think, came first. Okay. And... I want to say that these are set around World War II. So women were already voting by then, right? When did yeah, World War II, yeah. All right. So this is around World War II. But I think I want to say that one of the other books in this series, the cover of it had something to do with uh, women's rights. So check it out. I may be wrong. 
but this is oh, something yeah, number, number two, Miss Dimple rallies to the cause. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Good. Good. So yeah, I haven't read any of these, but I think I have all of them now, but one, and I'm not sure what number this is, um, but it's set around World War II. Miss Dimple Kilpatrick. That's number three. Okay. It's from the set in the small town of Elderberry, Georgia. So Amber, if you're still here, this is set in Georgia. And uh, they will pull together to find a missing child. So, and Miss Dimple is a first grade teacher. So you've got a teacher mystery here. Oh, that's good. And of course, only number three and four are on Hoopla. On <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Okay. Well, at least, at least those are there. So that's good. Um, I have listened to the first one. This is the Herringford and Watts mysteries by Rachel McMillan. And I think these are lightly faith-based and I found this at a thrift store the other day. I'm not sure what number it is. The white feather murders by Rachel McMillan. So have y'all heard of this? I think Sarah from the bookish knitter read, she did a read along of the first one of these for March mystery madness. They are sort of, um, kind of a Sherlock retelling, only female. I like the female versions of Sherlock and Watson. Yeah. Marin. Number three. Okay. It's set in Toronto, 1914. Miranda Herringford and Jem Watts never could have imagined their crime solving skills would set them up as emblems of female empowerment in a city preparing to enter World War I at the behest of Great Britain. So maybe this could be women's, mm -hmm. uh, women's rights. So that's good. All right. The rest of what's in this box are all Annie's and guideposts. So I'm not going to do those till the end. I've got a bunch more paperbacks. Um, I grabbed a couple of the scrapbooking mysteries, even though I already have them, but I found the first two, I think at Gainesville, and I decided to go ahead and pick these up to, um, to sell on eBay. This is book one and two in the scrapbooking mysteries by Laura Child. Um, book one is Keepsake Crimes. Book two is Bound for Murder. And I've only read book one. This, these are set in New Orleans. Tiffany, I think you said you love New Orleans. So this is about a scrapbook shop that is uh, in New Orleans. Nolans. Oh, here's another. This one I do have of the Betty Hechtman. This is in the top four of somewhere, maybe book two or three. Dead Men Don't Crochet. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> book three, maybe. Yeah, I love that title. It says it has a delicious recipe and a crochet pattern included. So nice. we get both. I pictured Betty Hechtman as being like a little gray haired lady. I was totally wrong. <laughs> oh, it's book two. Book two. Okay. Yeah. So I have, I have listened to that one. All right. Here's one I know nothing about. So hopefully y'all do. This is, I've never heard of this author, Shelly Fredont or Fredont. Yes. A celebration Bay <laughs> mystery foul play at the fair. Have you interviewed her? I haven't, but I love that series. So the main character is a event planner. And it takes place in a small town, and I think it's New York. And um, it's there's only four books. Okay. It's really good. It's a really fun series. So I should keep this? Read it. Yes. <laughs> what number is this? It's not anyway. number one. <laughs> now Play at the Fair is number one. Yay! Oh, that's oh. perfect. Yeah. Never mind. Awesome. Good deal. Nice. So everybody, y'all heard that? Tiffany... Tiffany's recommendation, jump up and do some jumping jacks for saying recommendation. <laughs> Actually, I said it, so you don't have to do it. <laughs> I was listening to y'all in the car yesterday, even though I wasn't chatting. I was listening a lot to a lot of that. So I should catch up with the comments. Um, where did I get to? Do y'all remember the last one I was on? Um, probably the Cheryl one that's pulled up. Yeah. Oh, so, duh. Okay, yeah, here we go. That would be a good clue, the one that's pulled up. <laughs> uh, moving is murder is a fun mystery. Is that one of the Sarah, is that the Sarah Rosette one that I showed, or is that a different one? I think so. Okay, good. Uh, excited to try Sarah Rosette. Mm -hmm. um, oh, they're all on, oh, that's right. Y'all told me that mm -hmm. she said that. Moving is murder on Kindle. Okay, haven't read anything by her. Audible Plus is worth it, though, since you get to listen to more audiobooks. Um, yeah, so Audible Plus is worth it if 
the books they have or books you want to read. Um, I found a few on there, but um, I don't think it's going to be enough for me to keep it forever. I just, uh, and then I've said this before, the Quilts of Love mystery, not mysteries, they're romances, Christian romances. They're on there. Almost all of, there's like 24 and I think like 21 of them are on there. So I'm going to listen to those first. And then uh, if I, if at that point I still haven't found anything else to listen to, then I'll probably let it go for now. I can always get it again, you know, but there's no need in paying for it every month if I'm not using it every month. Yeah. yeah. Um, Moving is Murder is the mom. Oh, is the Mom Zone series. Okay. Okay. Thank you for saying that. I don't have the first one then. Um, excuse me. I think I have books two and three. So I need to find a copy of Moving is Murder. Sorry to be late. Oh, hey, Cajun. Uh, no worries. We took us forever to get started. <laughs> hello. Hello. I use Hoopla and library services for my audiobooks. Miami Library, you know, I can buy a card and you get 20 credits a month. Yeah, that's that's cool. I have started using my daughter Katie's um, Hoopla because we get 12. And so uh, I I logged in on my old phone that I don't use for much. Um, I logged into my daughter Katie's account because she hardly ever uses Hoopla. And so I have an extra 12 there. So that's usually more than I can can use. But yeah, for anybody else out there, Miami, the Miami Dade Library will sell you a library card. I think it's sixty dollars a year. It's Sixty-five. Right. Sixty-five. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I skipped. She was saying hi, and you don't like Sarah Rose's writing style. Okay. And um, do you can you pinpoint why? Or is I mean, is there like, is it kind of crass, or is it just like you just hard to read, or what? Charlotte Adams organizer series. You read one book and loved it. Okay, good. Yeah. Charlotte Adams is the one I was thinking of that, um, uh, like the uncluttered corpse or yeah. who live. Um, I don't know. There's, it's an organizer mystery, but that's it. Charlotte Adams. And the author is Mary Maffini with, uh, with two F's M A F F I N I, I think. Okay. Love the crochet series. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, Tarzana hookers. <laughs> is there, is there crochet? <laughs> yeah. That's okay, funny. Nice. Um, I only, you only get three hooplas. Well, I hope you take advantage of them. Use them, use them up every month. Um, and Amber, that would be a good way to get through more cozies on uh, audio. Just listen to them on audio. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So cozies just telling Amber about the, Miami Dade, um, best audio audiobook service in my opinion. Yeah, Hoopla's great. It really is. I really want to try the Mary Marks quilting series. Haven't yet. I know me either. I've got maybe three or four of them now. Um, you want to finish the first one and then read the rest. Yeah, of the crochet. Is that the one? Because Amber, you do crochet, right? I believe Amber crochets. Mary Marks quilting is on ebook only. I don't love reading ebooks. I'll do it if I have to. And I if I don't mind reading, it, but I don't like them on Hoopla. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, you can't you can't listen uh, to them on Hoopla. Like I'm list, I, I'm not even listening to it. I bought um, the Writer's Apprentice novella on my Kindle, and it does have the button to push play, but it's pretty short. And I've just been reading it at night when I, you know, don't want to have the lights on. And I don't mind, but I I don't know. I just don't. Go even I can, you can read that on your Kindle with Hoopla. I can only read it on my phone. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I can read I can read Hoopla on my Amazon Fire though, because it's kind of like a just a tablet with this. Yeah, tablet. Yeah, that's what I have. Um, my Kindle is a Kindle Fire, so I have Hoopla on there, so I could. But I still uh, don't like it because I just don't like how it looks. I guess I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Cynthia Baxter also has an ice cream shop series that's on audiobook. Oh, good to know. Thanks it's for fun. That. That's awesome. It's a, it's a fun series. So she was just echoing what Lee said. Um, Cat in the Stacks is first. Want to try Southern Ladies. Um, Cat in the Stacks is really good. And it also has a lot of diversity in it um, for, you know, people who are looking for that. There, um, there's LGBTQ. There's, um, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Different ethnic groups. And so it's, it's pretty diverse. So, um, yeah. Uh, oh, clicked on the wrong thing. Sounds like Tiffany would like the two elderly Southern sisters. I know. I thought the same thing. It does. Uh, hello, Bella. I can't wait to get old so I can exercise more free speech. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Sophia from the Golden Girls or something. <laughs> 
Oh, that's funny. Okay, Love Amber. Love it, Bella. And Freydon. Okay, how do you say her name? Is it Freydont? Freydont? I always say it Freydont. Okay. Shelly Shelley Freydont, but I okay. don't know. If you ever do interview her, you can ask her how she says it. A really good mystery series around women's suffrage is uh, in the U.S. is the Seneca Falls Glennis Tryon series. First is Seneca Falls Inheritance, 1992, by Miriam Grace Manfredo. Excellent, but hard to find. Well, what good is that going to do us, Donna, if we can't find it? <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for that recommendation. I will write it down because maybe it'll be somewhere. Seneca Falls. Who was the author? Miriam Grace. They, they've got an ebook for two ninety nine. Okay. So there you go, Donna. You can get it. Uh, people can get it on ebook. So Donna's recommendation. Thank you. Cheryl says I had to cancel my subscriptions to Scribd and Kobo Plus. I've never had Kobo. Uh, I know it, it's you know you have to just prioritize things for sure. Um, I have the Shelley Freedon series. Can't wait to read them. Awesome. Does she just have one series? Um, somebody said she had a Sudoku series, but I didn't even know that. Cheryl says that a couple comments down. A, a new series? Um, a Sudoku series. Oh, Sudoku. So okay. But okay. I didn't know that. Okay. Awesome. Um, the cat on the printer is so cute. Is that, oh, my cat? <laughs> That's sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> Randy doesn't like her to lay on the printer, but I let her since I knew she'd be in the background. Um, he usually tries to put something up there to keep her from, from laying there. But, um, I, I didn't care if she was there. That's sweetie. Okay. Did I, Oh, I went back up. Sorry. Shelly Freydon also has to do a mystery. Okay. Very good. Foul play at the fair. Sounds good. Yes, it does. Sarah's it's okay. I just think her writing needs to be more polished. Okay. Since you're an author too, you notice things that other people may not notice. Yeah. I think that's very true. Since I've become an, a copy editor, I, I notice things. Well, I noticed things already before that. That's kind of why I decided to try being a copy editor. But yeah, when I'm in, I, I think I mentioned y'all on a live stream, I had just finished copy editing Jack Castle's um, new, new, yeah. latest yeah. arc. And then I was reading something else and I was like, oh no, they should have put that there and that there. That should have been <laughs> so, because I was just in editing mode. So I'm sure if you're a writer, you definitely would think about those kind of things. Now, I know, Tiffany, you said you or don't have aspirations to be a writer, right? Do either of you, Storm or Leanne, do y'all have... Any aspirations to be a writer, or have you ever tried it? I would, I would like to, but I'm a horrible with grammar, so I would definitely have to have like a ton of proofreaders. <laughs> That's all you need. Just plenty of them. But I have a lot of ideas in my head. But... Yeah. Oh, uh, yes and no. Yes and no. I um the only thing I've published were some uh, newspaper articles in, in college. I I do have a, a byline in our college newspaper. I think I wrote a total of ten articles one summer, so that was fun. Thanks. And I've written since then some press releases and things for stuff, but oh, that's nothing cool. of major. That's the extent of my writing. All right, where did we get to? Do crochet? Yes, I thought you did. Oh no, you didn't sound stopping at all, Cheryl. We uh, we got it. Um. Mary Mark series. Oh, so you've read those. So that's good. I, Anita, I don't think uh, any of these ladies here, I don't think any of us have read them. So that's good to know that you like those. Uh, Nancy says, I'm new to Audible this year, but got um, got annual as it's the cheapest. Yeah, it is. Love it because it always has chapters. I use Hoopla when I can't get, um, and if you want to build an Audible library. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I would, like, whenever I had the full Audible subscription, I would only buy something that I couldn't get free on Hoopla or yeah. some, you know, through the library or whatever. But still, sometimes I will buy something and then eventually my library would get it. I'll be like, oh, but it's okay. Like the um, the Scythe, Ark of the Scythe, all of those I bought on Audible and now my library finally has them. Uh, I do all sorts of craft. Crochet is your main one. I like to knit, but I don't know how to crochet. I love your Kindle reader. You can't read print books, font too small. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I get that. It gets harder. The, the older you get, it gets harder. But um, I just put my reading glasses on, put on good lighting, and I will just read. Or I take my contacts out, and then I can see great because, uh, <laughs> without my contacts. But with my contacts, um, I have to have reading glasses. 
The credits are worth it as audiobooks are so expensive. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I had a, a the full Audible subscription for a few years, and I, I built up a pretty decent library. The Sudoku series is on your library site. Very good. That's awesome. Hannah found an Edwardian cozy mystery series by Marion Chesney. The first book is Snobbery with Violence. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> snobbery is such a fun word. I think that's awesome. Okay. So was that on your prompt list to find an Edwardian mystery because I yeah. heard that's not yet. Okay. Freydon also had the Linda Haggerty series. I wonder if that's the same as the Sudoku or if that's a different one. Working the on your first with first. violence is an MC Beaton. Oh, okay. I think. So Anita, you're writing your first mystery. Very good. That's wow. awesome. Very cool. Well, we'll we'll want to read it when it comes out. And sh oh, Cheryl, you have a short story published in an anthology that came out last October. Oh, cool. Can you tell us what it is, like where we can find it? You know, plug yourself so we can know. That's awesome. A lady from my hometown, um, not my hometown where I grew up, but my town here now where I live. Um, she's in our historical society. And if you've ever seen me do a uh, show the little free library in our downtown she's the one that painted on the little free library and painted the designs but anyway she's a writer and she has a story in the newest chicken soup book it's the chicken soup uh christmas uh, one that like just came out so um she was able to get several copies that she's been selling and i missed out they ran out and i wanted to buy it and um hopefully they'll get some more but that's pretty exciting so yay so i knew more than one people who've had short stories published. And, and that yeah. snobbery <laughs> with violence is on Hoopla on audio. Oh, good. Good, good deal. I need, let me write that down because I'm going to look up that later. Because I'm like, I don't, I don't know any other Edwardian, so I've got to mark it just in case. Who's the author of that? MC Beaton. Oh, okay. Is it part of one of her series? Is it Agatha Raisin or? It is says it's an Edwardian mystery series. Oh, oh okay. It so also it says that she wrote it as Marion Chesney. Oh. Oh, that is the name they said earlier. That makes sense. Okay. I guess. Okay. I'm gonna write that down. All right. Cool. Nice. And Bella says, I attempted to go back to paperback today for an e-reader break, but yes, I have to make sure I have my reading glasses on. Yeah, same here. Absolutely. I, I do not want to admit that I need bifocal, but yeah. <laughs> so I keep like having to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Storm, yeah. just think I have trifocal, so you're yeah. still good to go. <laughs> when I hit 40, my eye doctor said, uh, my, on my next eye appointment, he's like, well, surprisingly, I don't think you need bifocals yet. Most people need them by the time they hit 40. And so it was probably four or five years later, I finally had to give in and I had to get some. Yeah. And now, of course, I'm well, I just oh, had an eye exam, exam like at the beginning of this year. And he like looked at my birth date and says, so bifocals? <laughs> so, really? Don't even look at my eyes yet. He's like, but then he's like, well, you're just really on the edge of it, you know, yeah. so you could probably go a little bit longer, but I probably should have just went ahead and got bifocals, but I didn't want to yeah. admit that I needed them yet. I know, I know. It's, it's <laughs> hard. Okay, let's see where we want to go next. Here's one I do not know anything about. It's by Delia James. Uh, it's a witch's cat mystery by uh, called by familiar means and this i don't really like to read witch mysteries or anything so some of you guys that do might be interested in this one um i don't know anything about the series or the author, any of y'all know number two, oh, sure. number two i think cozy might have read that one maybe okay it is a witch's cat mystery i feel like i've heard one of y'all talk about it it's blurred by uh laurie cass she says it's a special brew of magic murder and mayhem and one extraordinary cat it yeah. looks like there's only three books mm -hmm. it's like short okay change. yeah it says after discovering her magical heritage and being adopted by a furry a furry feline familiar alistair artist annabella Britton has decided to make picturesque Portsmouth, New Hampshire, her new home. So it's set in New Hampshire. Nice. So, it's got a cute cover. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. And then this one I've had in my possession before, but I gave it away because um, 
another lady from our historical society used to own a business in town. She used to have a rubber stamp store that was called Azalea Hills. And this is called Murder at the Azalea Festival. So I saw it the other day at one of the book sales and I just picked it up again. I don't know if I'll keep it this time and actually read it or I'll let it go. But it is a Wilmington, North Carolina mystery by Ellen Elizabeth Hunter. I don't know if that's a series. It's number three in the Magnolia Mystery series. Okay. Magnolia Mysteries. So it sounds very Southern and um, might be worth taking a look at. It looks like it's on Kindle Unlimited as well. So Okay, good. Wilmington historical preservationist Ashley Wilkes <laughs> uh, is hired to work on restoring a period mansion inherited by glamorous television star Tiffany Tellier, whose meteoric success and newfound wealth has made the extensive renovations possible. Um, in case you didn't get the Ashley Wilkes, that's a character from Gone with the Wind. In case y'all are not familiar with Gone with the Wind or haven't read it. Is that the guy on Gone with the Wind? <laughs> yes, it's the one that Scarlett O'Hara pines for the entire book. And he's married to Melanie and Melanie loves Scarlett, but Scarlett is so awful to her. <laughs> so it's a whole quadrangle, triangle, whatever thing. Um, all right. Here's an author, again, that I have not heard of. I have two from her series. I think these are books two and three. I want to say I looked these up. Uh, Melissa Glazer is, and I, I bet that has to be a pen name because you'll hear in a minute. The, um, uh, the, the, um, Series is called A Clay and Crime Mysteries, Mystery mm -hmm. Series, Clay Crafting Tips Included, and um, The Cracked Pot, maybe, I don't know if it's book one or two. That's number two. It's that number person, two. Melissa Glazer has like six pin, pin names. That's also like Tim Meyer oh. and um, uh, just a bunch of them. Um, okay. I can't think of who else. Oh, uh, Kate. Um, Jessica Beck that writes the donut shop. Right. That's the same person. Okay. And it is a man, isn't it? I it's think a it's man. Him. Yes. So maybe Tim Myers is his real well, name. Is actually, sure, yeah. but yes. Tim Myers is his real name. Okay. And Ali, what number was this one? Two. Two. Okay. And then I think this may be three then because this says author of the cracked pot. So a fatal slip. Number three. Yes. Okay. And there's only yeah. three in that series. So, okay. All right, good deal. So I just need to get number one of these. So I'm trying to think if I've read, oh, I, I have read one of the Donut Shop Mysteries, I, like book five or six, before I even realized that it was farther down in the series. That was one of the first, uh, one of the earlier cozies that I ever read was, um, uh, what's the donut that's not really a donut? Uh, cream puff? Uh, I don't know. The cream puff? <laughs> No, um, it starts with a. Uh, oh my god, I can't know it. this. I can't think of what it is. You know what I'm talking about? There's a crawler? Crawler, that's it. Yeah, crawlers are not technically donuts. Killer crawlers, that's the uh, the one I, that I read from the from that series. So I guess I have read at least one book by Tim Meyer. But yeah, he writes under a lot of names. Okay, I here. what it was. <laughs> Here are, um, I think I have both of these, or I know I have the first one. This is a series I want to read. I have read other books by Sheila Connolly, but I really want to read the Apple Orchard series. I think this is book one, One Bad Apple. I think Ro likes that one, don't she? So I can let this one go because this is a duplicate. This one I got to check and see if I have it already. Bitter Harvest. Um, I don't know what number this one is. I read a few of those. I, I liked it. Yeah. Uh, so One Bad Apple's number one and Bitter Harvest is number five. Okay. Yeah, I definitely want to read this. Did I hear somebody say that she passed away? Yes. Sheila mm -hmm. Conley. Um, Her daughter wrote, finished, I don't know if she finished a book that, that, that Sheila was already writing mm -hmm. or just is continuing a series, but her daughter did, did just finish something that she, that under her oh, name. Good. Okay, good. So I don't know yeah, if other she, stuff will continue or not, but she has a lot of series. She does. There, I've read um, the one that's set in, is it Ireland or Scotland? I always get them mixed yeah, up. The Cork, Cork County. Cork, buried in a Bog. Oh, County. I think, I've, Cork or I think I've read two or three of those. 
and um, and I've read the first one of the Victorian Village mysteries, and I feel like there's another one that I've read. Um, and then she's got a couple more that I yes, yeah, she's got a lot. I know it is a lot. Okay, this one I see all over the place, and I don't really have any interest in reading it, but I went ahead and grabbed it because I think it was like a fill a bag deal. Uh, the Darling Dahlias and the Naked Ladies by Susan Wittig Albert. What are you talking about? This the other day? Yeah, tell us about it. Oh, it takes place in the um, so. It starts out and the women, it's, there's a garden club and the women are talking about like, oh my gosh, I'm hearing rumors the bank's going to shut down and blah, blah, blah. And it's the crash. So then we go into the Great Depression and um, the fun part about it is like, I don't know if it's at the beginning of the chapter or just mixed in. I can't really remember, but there's like, like just these fun like tips, but it's tips like how to like better survive the depression. So it's like how to use your... I don't know, wood cleaner for your toilet bowl or, I mean, just weird, like, yeah, you know, stuff like that, or like just recipes cut corners. for like homemade shampoo or, you know, stuff like that. And so it's just really, really interesting to me. And it's really fun. It's a Southern series. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Okay. What number is this? Is this book one? It's number, number two. Number two. Number two. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Oh yeah. Darling Delilah's in the cucumber tree is number one. Yeah, and they're on Hoopla at, on audio. So. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll at least give it a shot and uh, listen to it. Um, cool. Yeah, I was I had my eye out for this author because she has a book about Rose Wilder Lane, Laura Ingalls Wilder's daughter that I wanted to find. And um, so when I was at Gainesville, they had a bunch of these, and I kept passing them by. Then I picked this one up somewhere in a fill a bag sale, so I just went ahead and, and grabbed it. Um, this one, I think I've heard y'all talk about, um, maybe recently, Big Shot Mysteries by Ellie Alexander, Chill to the Cone. I have not read or collected anything by her. So have any of y'all read these? What can you tell us about? I just read up through, um, number eight, I think it was, um, it's a fun series. So at the beginning of the book one, um, she basically, her and her husband met and work on a cruise ship together. Something happens and she leaves the boat and goes back to her hometown of Ashland, Oregon, which is a real place. Right. And right. Um, she works for her family's bake shop called Tort. And okay. it's a really fun series. She actually has a few series that I really, really enjoy. She has a brewery series and then she has a series called Pacific Northwest. That's also really good. It's fun because... It's like this woman who was trying to be a journalist and she couldn't find a job. And so she takes whatever job she can get. It's like at this extreme sports place. So she kind of lies. And then they send her on these extreme sports and she's oh, like, no. she doesn't know what she's doing. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. You got to think before you lie about something. <laughs> but yeah, she seems so down to earth. I've seen her on your channel yeah. a few times. And then on the Bookish Bryants, I think they interviewed her once. Um, and I don't always get to comment. And I haven't gotten to watch your whole uh, cooking video, but I watched a, a good bit of it the other day where she was on there and Julia Buckley was on there. That was an awesome, uh, awesome Her books video. are hard to find too. So, oh, are they? They okay. are hard to find. Yeah, you okay. can't. I can never find them on any libraries or anything like that. Like, they, really? yeah, no, your storm's exactly right. It, it's hard. really hard to it's find like them on any condition. library. Oh wow! So maybe when I get done with this, I can get uh, I can get some dollars for this on eBay, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, and if any of you guys are interested, let me know. I'll, I'll still give you a good deal on uh, for. It's uh, like that's it. a series that I'm going to try next year. Sometimes. You are? Yes. That's so exciting. Yeah, if they're on audio, I will for sure uh, give it a try. I want to say, my sister. Is it a okay? Who wrote? Who writes? Live and let chai. Brie Baker, Brie Baker, Brie Baker. Yeah. that's the one my sister's been reading. She's gonna, she's reading a bunch of those and she's gonna send them to me. So, um, I don't know why this made me think of that, but, um, uh, but yeah, so totally different. Which is also, right. um, Brie Baker is also Julianne Lindsay. Yep. Uh, okay, okay. I was just about to I'm, say that you beat me to it. <laughs> I, I'm I always reading that, her but... on the 16th of oh. January. So All fun. right, so let, uh, oh, am I missing some good comments? You guys gotta oh, tell fine. me if I'm. I don't think I missed too many. Um, so, 
Lies, uh, large, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Tempted to go, oh, I read that already. Okay, so, so I am caught up. Okay, let me just leave it there so that I know where I am. Okay, so you guys have been talking about Leslie Budowitz lately. I found a salt and pepper and crime rib. So what can y'all tell me about these? Because I haven't read anything by her. Have you guys read those? I have is, not. Is that, is that the food blogger one or is that the other one? So the salt and pepper is a Food spice lovers. shop. I've read, I've read both, but I didn't know. So they're from two different the Food series. Lovers Village, haven't you, Storm? I've read the Food Lover series, yeah. Okay. The Village one. Uh, a salt and pepper is the first one, right? I've read, I've read, I've read the other one too, like at least a couple of books in the Spice Shop series. Okay, this is book one. Of so the spice, this, shop. the spice Shop, I don't, I didn't. It wasn't my favorite series, um, okay. but it takes place in Seattle. I really don't remember too much about it. it. I mean, she owns a spice shop within kind of, I think it may be, I think it's in a, a nod towards the Pike market. Um, and that the spice shop is kind of within there. And then the food lovers village, um, I think it's in Montana, which is yeah. the only series I've ever seen that takes place in Montana. Okay. And her family um, runs like a specialty grocery store. And, um, she works for them. I like that one much better than the spice shop. For okay. What number is this one, Lane? Do you know? Two. Okay. Awesome. I can handle that. I hope you can hear my little dog downstairs. She's like crying. Oh, do you want to bring her up? Come no, her he, she's my dad's dog. But if he doesn't pick her up and put her on his lap, she like throws a fit. And <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've got eight more paperbacks. Um, and a lot of them I don't know anything about. Carlene O'Neill. This is a Cypress Cove mystery. Ripe for murder. Looks like it might have something to do with grapes, that. wine. I don't know. Have y'all heard of that? Mm -hmm. I have not. That's number two in this series. It's a... Uh, Carlene O'Neill. It has to do with... The, I think it's set at a winery. Penny Lively loves running her family's winery. But to keep business growing, she needs to find a way to attract more guests. When she's approached to invest in a new train line through wine country, Penny, her, Penny and her intoxicating winery manager, Connor, hightail to a lavish resort to hear the details. Unfortunately, her neighbor's daughter, Chantal, is there also swirling up trouble by flirting with the married investors and with Connor, too. It always cracks me up when they the wording they use, like, is like still puns, just as punny yes, as yes, the titles. Yes, you know, that's fun. So nobody's heard of this one. Cozy said she's looking forward to reading the trilogy. She brought all three of them on Kindle. Oh, of this one. Oh, okay, awesome. And did y'all did we say what number this one is? Does anybody know? That's number two. Right for murder. Okay, awesome. All right, this one is by Caitlin Dunnett or Dunnett. It's a lease. McCrimmon mystery. It sounds very Scottish. Scone Cold Dead. It may not be Scottish. I don't know. It just sounds but the name and everything. Has anyone heard of this? That one it's on my really it's um it's it Scottish. Is Scottish. It's on my um new series I want to start next year. I think um Cozy's been reading some of them. They sound so fun. Storm, did you read just, some of them? I haven't read any of them, but I, I think I've heard like Ro talk about them. Yeah, it says that so the main fun. character is a Scottish, a professional Scottish dancer. Mm -hmm. She gives up her life of performing and returns to her hometown of Moose Tukaluk, Maine, where she runs a <laughs> Scottish emporium. I know. Seriously, Moose, M O O S E, Tuk, T O O K, A L O O K, Moose Tukaluk. <laughs> That's cute. Um, what a name. Wow. So it has. Of uh, some Scottish, uh, Scottish bits, and it's set in Maine, so that's a fun combination. Uh, well, did anybody say what number? Do we know what number this is? Number two. Two. Okay. What's the first one called? Well, the first one is called Kilt Dead. Oh, I wish I was here because she read that for uh, Book One Cozy's Club, and I don't think I read it. I don't think I got it done. Maybe I did. Oh my goodness. No, I think if I, I would remember if I had. So, and I, I want to say that she liked it and it may be on Hoopla or Kindle. The, it's it's on Hoopla, but it's on ebook on Hoopla. On ebook. Okay. Okay. So yeah, Kilt Dead. I, I'm so glad that you looked that up. Okay. Very good. So Jean Flowers writes the 
Postmistress mysteries. That's something we don't yeah, yeah, I've never heard of. Uh, canceled by murder. Look at all the letters on the floor. I wish they didn't glare. But yeah, I'm kind of excited about that. I've always been intrigued by mail. When I was in college, I worked at our dorm. And um, for my last several years, I was the mail clerk. So I was a desk clerk. But then I also had the extra responsibility to put up the mail every day. And that was just fun. So yeah, this is a, a first class first in what looks to be a wonderful new cozy series. Is this the first one? Canceled by murder? It's number two. Number two, okay. North Ashcott Post Office. In this zip code, COD means cause of death. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would get Tiffany. All right. So it says she's also the author of Death Takes Priority, so she must have another series. That's death the first one. one. That was the first one, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I gotcha. So you, that's right. You said this is number two. Okay. Cassie Miller returned to her sleepy hometown in the Berkshires to start over as new postmistress, but she soon finds that dead letters are nothing compared to murder victims. That sounds really cool. I'm, I had never, had any of y'all ever heard of that? No, but it, it sounds kind of fun. I know it does. I, I'm, how many are in the series? Three. Okay. Yeah, that's doable. Very good. I like that. Um, Storm, don't you, I just saying, because um, Elizabeth said she likes the mail. Isn't there another series that you read that you really like that's a male series? Um, well, I've only read the first one, but I think Rosie, uh, Rose read more, and that's the one by um, Tonya Coppas. And I can't remember what it's called, though. So it's not Campers and Criminal. It's another, no, yeah. another series. Okay. Do y'all know she has a YouTube channel? She's so yeah. cute. Um, have you, uh, do any of y'all subscribe to it? She will come on and answer reader questions, and she's adorable. It's, it's called A Mail Carrier Cozy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I haven't read any of those. And but yeah, some of them I think are on Kindle YouTube. Unlimited. So this next one is, uh, I think I've heard of this author, but uh, I don't think I've heard of this series. It's a Craft Corner Mysteries, includes craft tips, by Mary Ellen Hughes. This is String of Lies. It is blurbed by Laura Childs. And apparently an, it's not the first in the series because it's his author of Wrath of Deception. But anyway, let me show you all the cover if I can. Mm -hmm. String of Lies. Oh, it's nice. Nice. Uh, what is going on with the glare? There we go. It's better. Anyone know anything about this or the series? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't. I think she writes the Preserved series, too, though, like the yes, Pickled and Preserved. I've read the first book in that series a long time ago. Preserve, Like, um... Like, like candy. candy. Preserved. Yeah. Okay. Did yeah. you look this one up, Lee? Do you see anything about it? It's number two in the series. And Let's what see. are some of the other titles? Wreath of Deception. Oh, fun. Yeah. String of Lies and Paper Thin Alibi. Okay. Yeah, because it looks like she's got a lot of beads and... Um, it's, a craft, it's a craft shop business she has. Fun. Okay. Yeah, that sounds fun. Very cool. All right. Here's one by Josie Bell. First in a new series. Of course, you know, probably not new anymore. The series is called A Goodbye Girls Mystery. And goodbye is B B U Y. And it's 50% off murder. That looks fun. Man. Can't get my... Have any, has anybody ever heard of that? No, but that's the first one in the series. I, yeah. um, I've heard of it just through doing research for the videos, but it says that they're a group of bargain hunters. Oh, and there's an, I know there's a Christmas book because I just talked about it today in the okay. Christmas spotlight. And it sounds so fun. Like yeah. I just imagine them like going into like sales and like throwing like. You know, to <laughs> it find says that product. that is by the author Jen, by Jen McKinley, author of the Library Lovers Mystery and Cupcake Bakery series. Oh. Writes as Josie Bell. Oh, Mister, yeah, 
when I pulled Oh my it. goodness. Sure. Well, there you go. Now we've got a new Jen McKinley series to read. That's awesome. All right, Tina. So, going on the TBR storm. Yeah. <laughs> so here's just the first little paragraph. Everyone loves a good deal, especially the goodbye girls, a group of coupon clipping discount divas <laughs> who scour the circulars and plan their attacks on stores as if they were generals plotting their war strategies. <laughs> see? Can't you see them like that's awesome yeah <laughs> very cool so this may be our best find of the night mm -hmm. all right now i have one by ada madison a brand new series a professor sophie knowles mystery uh the square root of murder it says puzzles and brain teasers included mm. so that sounds fun that's so fun see what fun things you can find by going to library book sales you just never know what you'll find things you've never heard of so it looks like this. Go ahead. That's the first book in the series. There are four books in that series. It's set in Massachusetts. A college oh. professor it says Dr. Sophie Knowles teaches math at Henley College in Massachusetts. Her students adore her because she always finds a way to make the most intimidating math seem fun. But lately, everyone's biggest problem isn't math, it's murder. So it's a teacher. That's something you don't get a lot of. Right. The one teacher series that I really enjoy is all about <laughs> retired teachers. And it's the it's by Olivia J. Washburn. I think, Tiffany, you've read some of those. Um, mur uh, Fresh Baked Murders. I've read at least three of those. But those are a lot of fun. And uh, so, yeah, this is about a college professor. That's awesome. Just so, you right. guys, just so you know, the first three books are by one author. The fourth is by a different author. Oh, so Okay, that's, that's interesting. Why, but yeah, hmm. It could have been a situation like where they're maybe it's their child or something or their heir that finished oh. finished out. Oh, I had two of these craft corner mysteries by Mary Ellen Hughes. Who um, did we say? You know, these. Do we know if she has another pen name? Because I'm almost feeling like these are Tim Meyer. Also, do we know? Anyway, this is Paper Thin Alibi. That was the third one. Okay. And you said there's only three of these, I think. I think you yes. said that. Okay. Very cool. All right. One more in this box. And I bought this. I don't really have any interest in reading this. Um, but I have a bunch of books that have been sitting around in my garage for a long time that were like left over from a library sale. And I've given some away. I put some in the yard sale. I put some in the little free library. Anyway, then when I started selling on eBay, I thought I need to go back and comb back through those books and just see if there's anything worth selling. So I found a book in this same series and I, it didn't have a lot of value on its own, but I thought if I ever see another one from that series, I'll grab it and I'll try to get two or three and put them together and make a lot. So that's why I have this. It is a Victorian mystery by Robin Page, Death at Rotting Dean. And I don't know really anything about it, but I have another one. Couldn't tell you the title, but I mainly just kind of bought that to, to sell. That one's <laughs> kind of Okay. So I don't know anything about it. There's sheep on the cover and the windmill. Um, it looks very old school cozy. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's Victorian. For Catherine Ardley and her newly lorded husband, Charles, a seaside holiday in Rottingdean is a much needed respite. Known as Smuggler's Village, the cozy hamlet sits upon a labyrinth of hundred year old tunnels through which contraband goods were once smuggled in and out of England. Sounds kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. it was first published in 1998. That's why I was saying it looked like an old school cozy. Yeah, yeah, but this this book is in pretty good pretty good condition. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if you want to read all. We're like backed up on comments. I don't know if you want to. Oh yes, it. let's do. Let's do. Go ahead. Um, hang on. Let me pick this up because we're so we are closing in. All I have left are uh, some Annie's books. And uh, a couple of guideposts and one MC Beaton that was hardcover. I've just got some hardcover books. Stuff. All right. So let me, let's check out comments. All right. Where am I? All right. So pin name of MC Beaton. And I've already forgot what, who did we decide was MC Beaton? I forgot. 
I know I already forgot too. All right, we can always go back and look. Um, so oh, it Amber, was the Edwardian, the Edwardian one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So Amber says, from what y'all are saying, Audible is very different than what I thought. I was thinking you would just subscribe to it and then have access to all the books. No, um, Amber, they have, you get one credit a month and some of their books are priced lower than what you pay per month and some are priced higher. So you never want to pick one that's priced lower um, you could just buy that one cheaper and use your Audible credit on something that's higher. So I don't even know what the fee is right now. Maybe you guys know how much it is per oh, month. You don't, uh, you don't want to use a credit on a book under $11. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then they have Audible Plus, which does include, <laughs> excuse me, a lot of different titles. And anything that's in the Audible Plus catalog, you pay... Um, I'm not sure what it is per month. If you have an Audible subscription and get one credit, then your Audible Plus membership is cheaper. But if you don't have the one credit a month, you pay a little bit more for Audible Plus, I believe. That's how it was with Audible Escape. Um, and so, but you only get to listen to what's included unless you want to buy it. Uh, extra. It's an indie anthology title. Clues. Okay, this is Cheryl's book that she's got a, that she's published in. Clues and Culprits. You can find it on Amazon. All right, let me look that up. Write that down. Cheryl's book. Clues and Culprits. Nice. Yay. Very good. Congratulations on that. Yeah, that's and awesome. No, you have to buy the audiobooks on Audible. Um, yeah, so, well, or Cheryl, you if you have a subscription, you can use your credit, but I mean, you're, you're essentially buying it. If you have a subscription, you're buying one book a month. And I have heard, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard if you let three credits build up and then if you earn a fourth one and you still haven't chosen anything, you lose it, you lose one, which doesn't seem like you should because if you've paid for it, you ought to get to pick it indefinitely but i guess you know they have to have cutoffs so i there were times when i'd be like oh i can't decide and i'd let it get built up to three and then i'd be like okay i gotta hurry and i gotta hurry and pick something wow. i got bifocals first when i was 34 oh cheryl bless your heart um it's it, but you know if it helps you see it's more important to see than you know who cares what you look like or what how you what how it make you know if it helps you see that's what's important the subscription gets you access to what they call their plus catalog and you can listen to as many as you want. Yeah. So there's two different subscriptions. Delia James is not too paranormal. Okay, good. That's good to know. Thank you. Appreciate that. And that was the uh, witch cat mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do read some, like I love the uh, haunted yarn shop mysteries because the ghost Geneva okay. is one of my that. favorite literary characters. <laughs> she is the best. So great. I just love her. She's so persnickety and temperamental, and she's just great. Oh, okay, so uh, Donna gave us a correction. Man, Manfredo, not, Man not Manfredo, but Manfredo on Seneca Falls. Okay, let me make sure I wrote that down. Where did I put that? I don't know where I wrote it, but I wrote it again. Okay. 44 this year. I've been in bifocal since early 30s. So, you know, and, and my eye doctor, he said by 40. You know, it, it's not a hard and fast rule. So, um, cat is, oh, was that, are y'all talking about my cat? No, <laughs> it's, I think that's in that familiar. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah, because mine is just lazy. Um, In the book, <laughs> the witch cat. <laughs> yeah. Sweetie, she has turned around where she can see y'all, though. I was going to say, she lays so still there, you can't even tell it's a cat sometimes. <laughs> oh, did I miss this comment? Oh, yes. Okay. Which is cat is on audiobook. Okay, cool. 24 hours. So we got a lot of people in their mid-40s. All three on audiobook for Dave James. Good. The Magnolia Mystery Series is very good. It's from the 80s or early 90s, um, but there were several. Did I show a Magnolia Mystery? I, I, it's all yeah, running. Yeah. It's all going crazy in my head. Was it this one? No. That was Ellie Avery. I'll, I'll go back and find it. So thank you, Cajun, for letting us know. 
Breezy, I found over 80 books in the Audible Plus, but only some cozies. I've had no trouble filling my library. I've only used one of my trial credits waiting on sales. <laughs> um, but Nancy, do you have that many credits built up? Because you bought the yearly uh, thing. Okay, so you so get all of them like at once. All the credits at once. You should get yours okay. all yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they do have sales like where if you buy three, you get one free sometimes mm -hmm. or whatever. So, um, And there's always a daily deal that's like two ninety five or something like that. But you wouldn't use your credit for those. No, no. You right. could buy that one outright. But there, that is always an option. But no, but if you're a subscriber of Audible's, then you can get that deal. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Putting all these best, uh, books on my four later list on my library site so I can see where to, which ones I really want to put a hold on now. Yes, I know. You got to prioritize. Melissa Glazer's Jessica Beck. Yeah, Tim Meyer. Yeah, we talked about that. Um, you have the first book in the Clay series. Okay, well, I have uh, the second two, but you only read on ebook, right? I was going to say we could we could trade, but, um, but I'll be happy to send you these when I'm done with them. Ashley was terrible. Made for a great. Wait, what? Made you for great book, but I never oh, understood the Ashley Wilkes love of. Oh, you're talking about on yeah, uh, yeah. Gone with the Wind. Tira, apparently, I love bad boys from a young age. <laughs> yeah. Bella, you and I have a lot in common. So, show of hands, how many of y'all have have read Gone with the Wind? I've not read it, but I my mom made me watch the movie. Like I think I was like 18 or something like that, and I watched it, and I go. I can't believe you made me watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I was like, <laughs> I love it. I, it's a classic that should be read. I think it should be read by it's, all. It's one of those that are probably going my classics like TV jar because that's what I'm going to make and then try to pull out a couple and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a good audiobook too, at least the one I listen to. All right. Uh, oh, were you telling us how to? That's when we were talking about the donuts that aren't donuts. Oh, crueler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crueler's. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you've read twenty donut shop books, and you've read all of them, Cajun. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's like fifty, right? Crueler. <laughs> yeah, we are way behind. Sorry about that. Uh, still have five or six. Need to be caught up. So she hasn't quite read them all. That's good. Three or four of the Orchard series. Good. And you liked them. That's good. I, I, there's something about apples. I'm always drawn to apples. Oh, hey, Carm. You guys, this is Carm. He has been a subscriber of mine for a long time. He's got a booktube channel. Do you still have your booktube channel? But mainly he's part of the vinyl community. You guys know what that is? Yeah. Records. <laughs> records. Yeah. So his, and did you even know there was a vinyl community on YouTube? I did not know that. Um, yeah. And so in their videos, they like show their record collections and all that and talk about records records and music awesome. and everything so um thank you carm seasons greetings to you as well um congrats on the poll yes awesome i got happy with the easier girl oh that's fine <laughs> we figured out what you meant uh collected the ones that were audible exclusive for orchard series the restaurant hoopla okay good yeah because i think the very first ones are not on there it starts with like book four four or five I recommend it on audiobook. You will finish it. It's going to be on your SAS list. Uh, but you still have read a ton of the donut shops. Yes, that's a lot. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All nine of Susan Whittig Albert's books are on Hoopla Audio. Thank you. That's great. I feel like Don. It, um, I feel like Donna from Studio in the Library has read those. Donna, let us know. Oh, we're coming up on a comment of hers. So I think Donna has read some of those, maybe. Mm -hmm. My short story is in the anthology and is not a cozy. Okay, thank you for that. Now there's the robot again. <laughs> Susan Whittig Albert is an excellent writer. Anything by her should be worth trying. She wrote my top favorite cozy series, the Beatrix Potter Cottage Tales. That's what I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, last year I remember when Donna was reading all of the Beatrix Potter series by Susan Whittig, Susan Whittig Albert. I'm reading the latest in that series. Which one? Uh, this one? The Bake Shop series. Okay. Oh, was that um, this one? Ellie Alexander. Yeah, she's reading Bake, Borrow, and Steal. I saw her say it earlier. Okay, cool. Have you read all of them, Anita? Did you Do you read in order, or do you mix it up, switch around? Let us know. I love the China Bell series by Susan Wittig Albert. Very cool. Bake Shop, one of my favorites. Thank you. Yes. Oh, she's on a baking reality <laughs> show. That's fun. The Brie Baker series. That's the one I was bringing up about um, 
uh, live and let chai. Yes. Yeah. So my sister's supposed to be sending me those. She may be sending them for Christmas. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah. Thank you for telling me that. I didn't realize those were two different series at first. The um, Leslie w yeah, Leslie yeah. Budowitz. Spice Shop is food lovers. Crime Rib is uh, not a fan. You're not a fan of her writing. Yeah. And uh, Tiffany said the same thing about the spice spice ones. Fave bake shops are Crime of Passion Fruit on Thin Icing. Oh, that's funny. Is that one book, Crime of Passion Fruit on Thin Icing? Or is that, oh, on Thin Icing is a separate book. Okay. Series is hit or miss, but it has amazing, amazing food descriptions and recipes. Just made the chili recipe from book two today. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, nice. Fun. Cheryl says, I tried Leslie Budowitz, but didn't like her writing. Well, so now I'm curious. I'm going to have to read one just to see what, <laughs> you know. Just to see what's wrong. Just not my type. More choppy writing, in my opinion. Okay. Um, it's like, you know, when someone says, oh, this tastes bad. Taste this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's still the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dyer have read the first in her brewing series. Want to read more. Um, both Read both of her Rose City series. Want to read her Extreme Outdoors and Bakery series as well. Yeah, I need to get around to reading something by her. Um I look forward to Cypress Cove trilogy. I've bought all three on Kindle ebook. So yeah, I had, um, what did I have? Book two of that series. I think it's in the other box. Very cool. Stone Cold Dead is book two. Uh, I own so many China bales. I need to get back to that too. How big is that series? I need to work on my shelves. I rarely buy books now as I'm almost exclusively digital and audio. And see, I, I'll pick an audio book in a heartbeat. But I like to have the physical book. I like to have it to show and video. Yeah, and that's that. <laughs> so I'm fine. If it's something that I won't read again, I'm fine with letting it go. I don't have to keep it forever. But I like to keep the series together. So I will always want to finish a series before I let them go. I like so to I keep my that. favorite series. What's that? I said I like to keep my favorite series as like print oh. so that I have them. But Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but really some of the ones that I really like, I never collected in the first place. So I, I don't have them, but um, like the cat who books, I've had a few on and off, but I didn't keep them because there was just so many to collect. I just didn't. Right so I've never collected those. I have the cookbook, but um, I don't collect all of the books because I'm probably not going to read them again. And so there's no reason in having them. And I listened to them on audio in the first place. So all right. Donna says, I read Kilt Dead, uh, book one. It was a five-star read. Oh, good to know. Good to know. Uh, oh, and here also is about the Lisa McCrimmon series. Awesome. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to that now that uh, that I've heard good things. So, and Breezy says she wants to try it. She owns a bunch of them. And Nancy says, another series that isn't really cozy, but they're good and you get drawn into them. Is that the um, Kiss McKimmon series? That, or Is it McKimmon or McCrimmon? Anyway, the Scottish one. Yeah. Uh, really want to read the Postmaster series too. It's a trilogy. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, this has been fun, but you have to go. Bye, Nancy. You're probably already gone, but thanks for stopping by. Lots of books on my TBR. <laughs> Do you mean you're adding? Oh, a lot of these are already on our TBR, probably. Yeah, that's and that's what I was hoping. That's why I invited you guys because I knew y'all would know more about some of these than I did. So, or than I do. Everyone's saying bye to Nancy. Maine is my favorite place. I need to check out Kilt Dead. It's so cold. Yes. And if you get to it before I do, let us know what, how you liked it. Bye-bye. Seems to be a lot of this industry so it's set in Maine. So you are good to go, Bella. Yeah. <laughs> I have um, Seaside Knitters. Is that Maine? I don't by know. Uh, Sally Goldbaum. Anybody read those? I kind of feel like those are Maine. It might be Massachusetts, but is Massachusetts on the coast? It's seaside. I don't know. It is in Massachusetts. Okay. New Hartford, Massachusetts. Okay, so not Maine. Sorry about that. But yeah, I know there are some. There are several in Maine. I kind of I've never all that Maine. northeast region up there. She just likes the New England area. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tanya Campus Mail Carrier is on audiobook. Oh, yay. Yeah, I want to read those. That's the postmistress one that she was talking about, right? Another series on my TV. She writes a pickle series. <laughs> That's the preserved one that I was talking oh, about. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Fun. Okay. Are those on audio as well? If you I like Maine, try Maine. Quite a while ago, just the first one. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Maine Clambake series. That sounds fun. 
The main character in the Rita Mae Brown Mrs. Murphy series, Mary Minor Harry Harristine, is a postmistress for much of the first part of the mysteries. Oh, well, good to know. That'll make me want to read them even sooner. Very good. Good to know, Donna. Thank you. I read all the Goodbye Girl series on audiobook. It's Jim McKinley pen name. Good to know the last book was... Oh, it's good, but the last book was strange. <laughs> Um, you've read the Josie Bell series, enjoyed it. So, Cheryl, did you know she was Jen McKinley? All five of the Goodbye Girls are on Hoopla Audio. That's great. I love hearing that. Oh, Robin Page might be a pen name for Susan. It is. Oh, I good to know. Opinion. Oh, very good. Well, I'm glad glad to know that. Donna, did you know that? Have to go. Thank you, Cheryl. Sorry, I know we've we have run on. I knew this was going to be long. Thanks y'all for sticking with me. If any of y'all have to go, uh, just let me know. Um, I am almost done though. I just have maybe like 10 hardcovers. Um, what kind of sounds like a ripoff? Oh, the, about uh, I mean, it, it can get pricey, but if you, they do have a lot of books that are exclusive that you can't find anywhere else. And so if you really want to consume audiobooks it's worth it for a while to get the ones you really want uh, to read. Well, so, and, Oh, Anita says she mixes it up. Doesn't read in order. That's and I think if you okay. don't read like a lot of people that think that like us maybe think they don't have a great selection because we're maybe looking all for cozies. Mm -hmm. I think the audible plus catalog has a lot of things. If you're not just looking. For yes. Cozies. Right. So keep that in mind too. Yeah. A lot of the things that I, noticed in when I just looked at the catalog that comes up when you say you're going to search um, a lot of those same ones that I was interested in, I went to Hoopla and they were there as well. And there's a lot of classics and stuff. So I thought, well, I don't need to, you know, I don't need to listen to it on. I don't need to keep Audible Plus for that if I could just get it on Hoopla. Um, the only exceptions that I found actually really all I've ever listened to on Audible Plus and I've really I've spent more money now than I, I haven't gotten my money's worth because I keep putting off the quotes of love series because I've only read two. Um, the um, Dixie trilogy by Lisa Patton, the first two of those are on audible plus and um, so good. If you guys have not read those, they're not mysteries, but they're so good. And um it's just a great story. Um, oh, so the first one is Whistling Dixie in a Nor'easter. It's about this <laughs> woman who uh, she's a southern, southern, modern Southern Belle, basically. Her husband talks her into going to Vermont to buy an inn. And when she gets there, the people that bought the inn from want to, they, they, it's, they say, well, we need to stay here and help you oh, get started, you help you run it. And they are the most overbearing, horrible people and just insist on keeping everything the way that they want it. But they sold it to her. And so it goes on from there. And the whole series, there's not, I don't think there's a single cuss word. And it's, and but yet there's ups and downs. There's drama. There's family drama. Um, the characters are great. There's some really fun, quirky characters. And uh, I'm on the, reading the third one right now uh, on my um, Sass. It's <laughs> Okay. Is it? Okay. okay. Who is it by? Lisa Patton. P A T T O N. When you first started describing it, it sounded like New Heart. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could see that. The, an inn in Vermont, yeah. yeah. Um, and maybe she got that ins inspiration from that. I don't know. But the first two are on Audible Plus. So if you have Audible Plus, I recommend those. And then the third one, I'm just reading in print. And I'm over half done with it right now. So I'm enjoying it a lot. But I loved the first one. I thought it was fantastic. Okay, so Elizabeth, we should buddy read White House Chef. Yes, we should. Um, I wish those were on audio. I love book one, um, and I have not continued. I do. I rave about book one all the time. Um, but they're not on audiobook. I definitely want to continue. It's I tell you what, Donna, have you if you read the first one, I'll read book two with you for sure. Because that's a series, even though I I won't commit to finishing it since they're all in print. Um, I I'm, for my SAS list, I'm going to have my list of series to finish and then my list of series to like read my list of 20 books. So book two will be on my list of 20 books for sure. Yeah. All right. And maybe, and also Aunt Dimity. I want to like all these series that are so long that I know I can't finish. I don't want to keep putting them off because I, I know I can't finish them, but I want to make a goal to at least make progress in 
um, all of those. You know, at least your your uh, series about series makes me try to read more in the series that I've started, but I will always still continue to start book ones. <laughs> yeah, well, that's okay. That's okay. I, I've got I several. I have, well, I've been looking through my. I started fifty six book uh, series this year. <laughs> oh my lands! I. I don't Tiffany, know. I haven't looked have at you started. Here. What? I think Tiffany 55. did a five. Oh, well, you no, showed no, me. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, at, least, I, at least however many book clubs we we did. And then, but I probably, honest to gosh, I probably only started another like five or ten besides those. I really tried to do my SAS list. I did. And I've been where Storm's at many, 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 many years. And I'm starting 22 series next year. So Storm, I'm with you. All right. <laughs> I did I, start and finish two series. So at least hey, there's that. <laughs> good deal. Good deal. I want to, um, well, I lost my train of thought. Um, it'll come back to me. Anyway. All right. Let's go back to the comments. So. What has Chef? Uh, oh, so have you read? How many have you read, Cajun? I've only read the first one, but I I have loaned mine out to other members of my book club, and several of them have read all of them because I own all of them, and I knew I wasn't going to read them right away, so I've just been loaning them out. I think I've gotten them all back now. Oh, there may be God. one that's still out, um, but everybody liked them that read them. They really liked them. Can um, you guys hear the little dog? He's making such a horrible noise. No. Okay. Good. So, oh, wait a minute. China Bill series started in 1992. The last one, book 28, came out in 2021. So is she still wow. writing them? Wow. Let's call him luck. That's a big series. Um, so, yeah, that, I asked the same thing. Did, maybe she answered us down here. I think I've been reading it since 1993. Wow. Um, that was the one I wish continued. Oh, now I hear her. Your dog. Yeah. I did hear yeah. yeah. Aw. <laughs> Have you read uh, the Lee Coslow series, uh, Ro, or anyone? So has anyone read the Lee Coslow series? I do not. Uh, I have I not heard know. of it. Do you know? Uh, can you tell us who the author is or anything? So Cajun says, if you like White House Chef, you, that you would like it too. Okay, good. Good. The Lee Coslow, is that the one? I have not heard of it. Let me write that down. Is that uh, the character or the author? Hmm. Lee, what I lost it. K O S L O W. There's another White House series. I've got one of them. It's a White House Gardener series. I think I loaned it to someone and they said it wasn't as good as the White House Chef. It's a totally different author. I think it's Dorothy St. James. Okay. So um, I just have it on my shelf, but um, whoever I loaned it to brought it back and they're like, yeah, I didn't like it as much. So. I can't hear her now. Oh, poor thing. Is she like, um, does she want to come up to you or what? No. She wants on my dad's lap. Aw. <laughs> but when he tries to put her up there, she runs off. <laughs> and he gets frustrated, <laughs> so he just lets her whine. Aw. <laughs> uh, this is LOL. I will read book one soon. Agent is uh, never, never buried book one by Edie Claire. So did she answer that? Yes, it is. Okay. I don't know what series they're talking about, but she answered it. So good. Rose says, I started a lot of series this year, but finished or caught up on over 30. That is amazing. That's That's, awesome. That rocks. It's a series with lots of changes for the characters across the course of the series. Okay. And which series was she talking about? Was she talking about White House Chef? The Lee Coslow. Uh, Lee Coslow. Okay. Okay. Jillian says, I finally just finished my SAS list. Oh, you're ahead of me. I'm still working. Um, work oh, for next year, she means. Well, you're still ahead of me because I haven't even started writing it down. But I haven't I haven't finished my list for this year yet either. But I'm working on it. Most of the series I need to finish are ones that I only have one book left. Hey, get those done fast and check them off. So plenty of room for me to start new cozies next year. That's excellent. And also, Jillian, if like you it. like if you have any series that you're staying caught up in, like if any of those are still being written, then, you know, just stay caught up every year, like check those series, see if a new one came out and then yeah. you can stay caught up. And then I am trying to do that. I'm trying to be better about staying caught up with the ones that I am caught up with mm -hmm. instead of letting two or three books go by. Yeah. 
That's a good goal that I need to do too, Storm. Yeah, I think Lee and I are both ready for the new coffee house mystery that's supposed mm -hmm. to come out in January. Yes. It was supposed to be December, but um, I know they pushed it back. Yeah. All right. Uh, Rose says I never heard of it, uh, but she added it to her TBR. Good deal. Yeah, I wrote it down too. Uh, just borrowed Save the Onion from Libby. Great. I, I love it. I, th I thought it was great. I feel I like it's that. amazing when we find a cozy mystery series that Rose doesn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the I mean, one thing I heard about the, from my book club that somebody said they thought that state of the onion was a little far-fetched in that they didn't believe that like and i don't want to give spoilers but what happens in the beginning they didn't think that that would have possibly happened and i think probably not today it couldn't happen but this book might have been written before 9 11 okay. and if so it, it could possibly happen before 9 11 but since 9 11 i think security has been ramped up a good bit and i don't think what happened in the very beginning could, could happen. But, well, I, I, I could just tell you, somebody, like, somehow gets through the White House fence and starts running through the White House lawn. That's that's what happens in the very beginning. Well, I don't so, know. I think we've seen some of that happen on the news. <laughs> well, yeah, the whole Capitol thing. That's true. That's true. You never know. All right. Uh, Dorothy St. James Southern Chocolate Shop Series. Okay. White House Gardener um, is the same, the same author. Don't remember a lot about it. Um, that was the Lee Coslow. She said she had read Lee Coslow a long time ago. Don't remember a lot about it. With long series that are really good, I treat myself each month with one or more of them, like Cat Who, Aunt Dimity, Heroes Finest, and Nancy Drew. Yes, that's good. That's a good Smart. thing to do, Donna. Yeah. I do the same. Rotate through them. Yep. That's exactly how most of my series only have one book because I'm caught up and there are new books coming out next year. Okay. Awesome. Good deal. Love those reading treats. <laughs> Cajun, yes, it is a treat to like pick up books that you love, series that you love, and read the next one. Anyone excited for Caramel Pecan Roll Murder comes out two twenty two twenty two. I don't even um, know. I don't know what's series that is. I'm, I'm guessing cupcake. Some kind of a bake well, shop. No. It's not that the next one is strawberry to death or something. Yeah, I was gonna like say. That. I thought it was a strawberry one. Too. All right, because oh, you have to tell it? us who the author is of that one. So Anita oh, apparently Anita already knows. Anna Swenson book. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> no wonder. Cozy. I tried to like. Never mind. You tried to not say it. <laughs> yes. Is that her, usually those come out in February? I think the end of February. Anita's going to be reading it. <laughs> I'll read it. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep reading it. I've come this oh. far. I'm going to keep reading end. it for oh, yeah. as long as she puts books out. She says but... she's not excited, but she'll read it and be tortured. <laughs> she, she's going to hate read it. <laughs> I mean, she's got some sort of hold on you no, or on me not. for sure. Yeah. I think for me, it's a nostalgia thing, but yeah, I'm going to keep reading it. I need to make myself read one in print because I think, Part of my issue is the narrator starting to wear on me a little bit, too. I don't like how she does little kid voices. So when Hannah's nieces are in, in the picture, it just grates. It's like chalk, you know, fingernails on a chalkboard mm -hmm. when she does a little kid voice. And then everybody starts to sound like a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Because it does. It gets so elementary. But here we go. This is how it starts. And we start. Number 29. That's what it's at. Okay. Lee, I want to uh, note that I was not a part of this. <laughs> Duly noted. Duly noted. This is my channel. We'll talk about Hannah Swinson if we want it. to. And we'll like it. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. I, feel like, I feel like my parents told me, no, this is bad for you. Never do this. And I was like, okay. And I never do it. So, <laughs> so you <laughs> haven't read any, Lee? Nope, no. and I never will. These girls have <laughs> all taught me that's the last thing I want to do. So no. No, I I disagree. I think the first few, the first half are really fun. But I feel I like really I already it. know nothing's gonna happen going forward. That's all <laughs> if I get started, then I'll be like these other girls and feel like I have to finish it. Yeah. yeah. So but and then that's true. If you're a finisher, don't start. It's better yeah. not to start. But yeah. I agree with you. It's like, like an addiction that you can't stop but want to. <laughs> but you know, 
I, I do agree with, I mean, the first 10 or 15, I would have probably have put it on my favorites list. I liked yeah. it that much. Yeah. So I feel like that's the reason I complained as much as I do because it was such a crash and burn mm -hmm. for me because it mm -hmm. went from so high. It wasn't just like I enjoyed it. Like I really loved it. So, but, um, but, but yeah, I agree with that, but I, I can see not wanting to start it at all just because you know where it's going, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. the train wreck, would you get to still get on the train? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I've already heard you guys say so much about it <laughs> that I'm like, I'm kind of spoiled for nothing to happen. So I but that's not really true. Something does happen and then it undoes. <laughs> <laughs> but they've talked about that too. So and then we right. come around yeah. full yeah. circle. Right. I'll and then that becomes one of the murder stories. I'll hear yeah. you guys complain about it while you talk about it, and then I'm okay. I'm like, all right, well, I know what's <laughs> going on, so it's fine. All right, let's finish these comments and let's get back to finish this book off. Yes. All right. Um, oh, so I didn't actually read. So she was just saying, you know, sort of like Ro, uh, she's got to see it through, even though you spray your eyes rolling with them. Okay, Cajun, do you remember the part? I, I got to do this because this is the most eye really part. I was in my car and I started yelling at the CD player when she says she's going to cook something for dinner and she's at either at Mike's or Norman's house. Norman's, I think. And she's like, hmm, what's in the refrigerator? Well, there's a pie crust. There's eggs. There's, she names a couple of things. There's bacon. Hmm, what can I make with that? I know, a <laughs> quiche. And then and it was like, okay, you just had to say the ingredients. We already know that's a quiche. Right. You don't need to. And I was like, what? I mean, it, it was worse than that because I can't remember the whole word for word thing. But I was and it could have been one of those. Oh, look, there's a, a pie crust. There's eggs. There's this. Let's make a quiche. <laughs> you yeah. Have to go yeah but like, that. Oh, hmm, what, can what can I make with that? <laughs> I know a quiche. <laughs> this is not elementary school. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Let me scroll on down to see what she said. If that was sarcastic, is anyone excited? If you she was sarcastic. It is a completionist thing. Yes, yes. Hello. Uh, her sister, Andrea, sounds five years old. I know. I get to cook, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, you like, you like it when I make my special cookies. <laughs> the way you're doing it, too, makes it, and maybe this is what you're talking about. She start, starts to sound like, like one of those, like, breathy creeper type of people for the little uh -huh. voices that's what i'm imagining that is what it sounds like you're that is it's i i i wholeheartedly agree with elizabeth it was pretty nuts and, and I, then i think lisa i i, I think it's what, what she said happens too because it's the children she has nieces but then lisa her bakery assistant started sounding like a child to me and i'm like i could take no <laughs> So a Pringles can once you pop. Have y'all ever done that? Yeah. Where you like pop it and like, and the lid goes flying. Yeah. I've done that. Hang on a minute. Oh, I thought my family said something. Okay. Uh, okay. Something to change and there is some growth, just not for the main character. Are, are we still talking about Hannah? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, if I read one a year, I think I would still like it. Uh, so Lee, just read one a year for the next 29 years. Yeah. So I mean, she binged them and got tired of it. But well, that's what I would do in the beginning. If I like something, I'm mm -hmm. going to binge them. So I would yeah. be in that same boat. So. I, I want to disagree, Ro, because I binged the first few, like the first 10 or 15 and caught up. And then I've been reading one a year for probably the last eight years. And I, they have definitely gone downhill. <laughs> definitely. Um, I can, I can read chapter books now. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yes. Oh my goodness. I've okay. only read two of them. Wait, have you read any of them? Um, there's, wait, I keep clicking the wrong thing. I okay, was, in, I I was looking, looking to see, but yeah, I have the blueberry muffin murder, which is number three, but I've never read it. Okay. It's fine. I mean, it's completely uh -huh. fine. Get up to like 15 where I first got mad. I really, I loved it until we got to, was it cinnamon roll murder where, um, kind of the the love triangle kind of hit a snag because Norman's old girlfriend Bev 
had a child and claimed that it was Norman's. Mm -hmm. And I had put Norman on such a pedestal that I didn't want him to have ever been with anybody else. And the fact that he thought that was possible meant that he had been with her and she was despicable. And I was just angry. I was just angry, that whole book. And after that, i just never been the same. And that was probably book 15. So that's why I say up to that, I'm good. But Cinnamon Roll Murder, I think, was the one where I was just like, what? No, 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 no. So, but that's just me. Uh, <laughs> Donna, she'll stay with the Hallmark movies. And yeah, I think those are pretty yeah, well. I like uh, the Hallmark movies cast. <laughs> what now? I like the Hallmark movies. Yeah, yeah. I've only seen, I think, the first one. I'm not a completionist at all, so I'll probably try it out just out of curiosity. Yeah, I think the first one is good. Um, so, okay, yeah. Um, Norman is a saint. How dare she? I know. See, this is why we can't bring it up. It's so, fine. Uh, I personally don't mind talking about it. I can talk about it all day. All right, back to the hall. Okay, so before we get to the Annie's and the uh, guideposts, I do have one MC Beaton <clears throat> I didn't realize I had picked up two of these. Uh, I don't think Janelle is still here from uh, Too Fond of Books, but she had shown uh, back earlier this year, she showed her whole collection of the Hamish Macbeth series. And it was right when she had just gotten her diagnosis. And so she kind of did a video about a couple series that she wanted to keep reading. And she has a bunch of these. And so I already have a book of a different series that I was going to send her. And I hated to just send one book because it was not in good shape. And I said, well, hey, I will look at what you already have. And if I find any more Hamish Macbeth mysteries that you didn't show that you have, then I'll add those to the, to the package that I'm going to send you. So um, now many months later, I finally have found some. And I'm, I'm not going to show them on here because in case she is still here, I'm not going to show. But I did find two copies of this one. So I'll show it. This is uh, Death of a Kingfisher. So Janelle, if you are still watching... I found this in hardcover and paperback. All the rest I'm sending you are paperback. So I think I'll send you the paperback one. But if you'd rather have this hardcover, it's in decent condition. I didn't and know then, there were so many. <laughs> there's a lot. What <laughs> number is this one? Number 27. And then also this is one she already has. But I found this at a rummage sale and it was a quarter. So I went ahead and picked it up. Death of a Traveling Man. So I'm not sending her that one. But the rest that I'm sending her, I'm not going to show you so that she can be surprised. But they're all from that series. This whole series starts out with death of a uh, something. And um, so anyway. Death of a gossip. Yeah. Is that the first one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So let's start with the Annie's books. I don't think Annie's are faith-based. Guideposts are faith-based. Um, Ro was reading... One of the one Annie series, I think. What was it you were reading, Ro? Um, was it Secrets of Castleton Library? Yeah, I, think that, I read the are first they, one of that series too. Are they on ebook somewhere that you guys um, are reading? They them? had them on audiobook on Hoopla. Oh, okay. So I have two of those. I have maybe one or two others of these, but um. I don't know. I don't know. Do y'all recommend the series? I have so many other Annie series and guidepost series that I don't know that I want to read this one just because I'm overwhelmed at this point. I've only but read I grabbed the first her. one, but I did like it, and I would read another one. So This is Bitter Words. I don't know if you, if any of y'all can look up and see what number it is. I'm looking. And this one is A Novel Murder. A Novel Murder is the first one. Okay, and good. Bitter, bitter Words is number two. Oh, great. So this is book one and two. Okay. Yeah, I might list these on, on eBay. So, um, Storm, tell us what it's about. <laughs> don't ask me that because I can't don't remember. <laughs> a Novel Murder is the first one. Join yeah, Faith Newberry and her cat Watson in the quaint town of Lighthouse Bay on Cape Cod in Massachusetts as she marries her love of books to a penchant for sleuthing. After landing her dream job as librarian at Castleton Manor, an upscale literary retreat, Faith is forced to read between the lines and solve the mysteries she finds among the stacks. Okay, yeah. so there's a cat Wait, in the library. Her cat, her, her cat, like, found a secret compartment in, like, the place, and she couldn't find her cat. And she's like, where did he go? Because there's like, because it's like a big place that has secret rooms and things. And when she finally found her cat, like there, she found a dead body. So. Oh, okay. And the, it's got a perspective from the cat, kind of. Okay. Because you're like, you can, like the cat's like, 
Oh, I don't know where I am. What is that weird smell? <laughs> oh, oh, interesting. So you get some from the cat's uh, yeah. perspective too. That's kind of cool. So, so at first I was like, I don't know about this, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> okay. Well, good. I, I think Rose said she liked it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, well, we got another, we got some more. Yeah. Robot, but anyway, oh, we still got another Hannah comment. You thought Ro Bev was a good development, some depth, uh, but the Ross on the other hand <laughs> almost did me in. <laughs> See, I didn't mind Ross. Agreed. I kind of preferred Ross because you've gone so far with the love triangle, you can't choose just one, so you got to get somebody different. Hey, Mc <laughs> Hamish Macbeth is Audible Plus. Oh, that's good. So maybe I will check that out. Uh, at least read the first one while I have Audible Plus. Uh, that roller coaster was insane. <laughs> with um. We're talking about uh, still talking about that yeah, show, Hannah, the one that yeah. shall not be named on yeah. Tiffany's channel. Um, <laughs> didn't work out like to my mind, like she thought it would. Okay, she thought it would. Okay, okay, I think I understand what she's saying. Um, Castleton Library. Okay, first 12 or 13 on audiobook on Hoopla. Good, I really like it. I will continue if more come on audio and the audiobooks are short. Yeah, they're not that long. Um, how many are in the series? Oh, I think it was like 24. Yeah, there's quite a few. Okay, so that's a lot. So the original, I believe this is the original Annie series. It's called Annie's Attic Mysteries. Uh, they are by multiple authors, although these two are by the same author. This is The Key in the Attic and The Diary in the Attic. They're by Deanna Julie Dodson. There's, like I said, there's multiple authors. They all are these beautiful hardcover books. Uh, I think all the Annie's books have dust jackets. And they have built-in bookmark ribbons That's that come cool. with the book. I had Which never heard of an Annie amazing. book until you and Ro were talking about them. Because I, was I like, think is Annie's mean? is a publisher. They're like an independent publisher. And they have all these series and they do them by subscription. So like if you wanted to subscribe to the Annie's Attic Mysteries, you would get one a month until okay. you want to stop. I think, And I think that's how Guidepost operates as well. Um that's what I think. I have only ever gotten them secondhand because I can find them usually at book sales and stuff. Uh, my sister has read all of the Annie's Attic, not Annie's Attic, the Annie's Quilted Mysteries. And her library ordered them for her. So I have seen these at libraries too. I have almost all of them now. I haven't started reading them yet. And another, there's only 12 of those. Of the actual Annie's Attic Mysteries, there's over 20. And I have most of them. Um, this one, Amber, I don't know if Amber's still here. This one is a crochet theme. This is Annie's Mysteries Unraveled. I think there's only 12 of these. This is Brass Chains by Donna Kelly. And I know it's crochet because there's a little crochet hook right there. <laughs> so, um, and, and the spines usually have yarn in different colors, oh, like cool. uh, knit or crochet. So, uh, oh, and here's another one from Annie's Attic, uh, The Package by Sharon Dunn. Did you get all of these books from library sales? Pretty much. I occasionally oh, really pick them good up library sales. <laughs> or I go to a lot of library sales. Do you guys, if you don't know about Book Sale Finder, write that down. Go on your computer or your phone or whatever. Um, www.booksalefinder.com. Click on your state and it will tell you where all the library sales are going to be. Um, coming up, you know, over the next several months. And, and like, you, don't have to, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be your library. You can just go to one. No, no. Oh. If it's in your area, I've gone all across the state to library sales um, and I can see them there. Or if I'm going to go on vacation or something, I'll look in whatever states I'm going through and see if there's any library sales mm -hmm. where I'm going. Some, there are even a few bookstores that advertise on here, but um, mostly they cater to library book sales. And also, uh, a library, if they have just a bookstore or a sale area, there there's a listing for those. So you could look and look up all the towns in your, as far as you want to drive and how whatever radius and just see what libraries have book sales and sale areas. And um, you can, you know, go to them. It's good to call ahead and make sure that it didn't get canceled or something, because especially still coming out of covid there's been a couple of libraries that I was glad I called ahead because they were like, oh, no, that got canceled, you know, and then it didn't get canceled on Book Sale Finder. But um, I love Book Sale Finder. It's great. And I found out about it when I was in charge of book sales at our library. Um, I was, I don't know, searching on Facebook or something. And 
um, and I found it somehow. So it turned out good. All right. So then I have a few guidepost books. These are all from one series. This is another series my sister has read. And I think I should almost have all of them now. Um, <clears throat> I've heard that these are written by multiple authors, but they're all under the name Emily Thomas. And it is The Secrets of the Blue Hill Library. And I don't know how many there are. And I don't know the order of these, but I'll just show them to you. Uh, guidepost books are naked hardcovers, and they're just beautiful. They do have some that are uh, soft cover, but I love the hardcover. They're just so pretty. And these are lightly faith-based. Um, so this is a fitting conclusion. This is probably the last book. I found these at Gainesville when I went to that big giant Gainesville sale. And it was almost, it, they were shutting down. It was like time to go. And they were over the announcement, over the speakers, everyone get in line, get in line. And I was headed to check out and I saw a box down on the floor that had a bunch of these in it. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I quickly got on my Kindle to see which ones I already had. Cause they were probably, these have a green, these might've only been 50 cents. I don't know. They have a dot system. So this one may be $2. They were not more than $2, one or $2. But I didn't want to buy one that I already had. So I real quickly got on there to see which ones I didn't have. So here's a Christmas one, a Christmas key. Oh, that's cute. That's a Christmas key. Yeah. So this, um, my sister told me a little bit about it. Um, I guess, I don't know. They must have started a library in this historical manor, mansion. Um, and it's the Blue Hill Library. This is the Valentine Visitor. I got all the holiday ones. Because there's also a Thanksgiving one. Oh. And this one's for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the birds. They have really yeah. cool covers. I like the covers. They do. Yeah, they, they're pretty covers. This is typical yeah. of guideposts in general. They have so many pretty covers. The only guidepost series um, that I think have horrible covers are the church choir mysteries. The um, I don't care for the artist's work and the colors they painted with they're just not they're just not right the colors are just I don't know they're just wrong anyway the rightful owner so that's it I the first one of these I think is called nowhere I see it all over if you go to book sales enough you'll find the first one somewhere um, um, nowhere, nowhere, nowhere to be found nowhere to be found okay and um Will you read a little bit of the description of that one? Just because these are farther in the series and I want to just get the, the premise. Yeah, so that one is, while converting the Victorian home left by her great aunt Edie into a library, Anne Gibson stumbles upon a fascinating find. Hidden behind an old star quilt is a tiny sealed off room with a small writing desk and a faded photograph of Edie in a wedding gown. Anne is certain Aunt Edie was never married, so who is the handsome young man with her in the photograph? Could he still hold claim to the house bequeathed to Anne? As Anne sets out to solve the mystery, she makes delightful new friends and runs into old ones, including a high school sweetheart who might not be happy that the woman who broke his heart is back in town. Ooh. That sounds really good. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, my, like I said, my sister has read a bunch of those and just raved about them. She's like, oh, I just read this series of Blue Hill Library. I'm like, oh, I have those. She goes, you haven't read them yet? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, so yeah, that sounds great. And I think I, I probably have. I need to go through now and check and see. If hey, I'm Elizabeth. Now. Yes. Just so if we don't make it through all the comments, um, Cozy said people are selling the Castleton Manor Library books for $10 or $20 a piece on Amazon. So okay. great to sell maybe those on eBay. Okay. Okay, good. But I'd be willing to, you know, sell them to you guys uh, at a much, much um, lower rate mm -hmm. for sure. And if you guys ever look at my eBay store, just like write a comment. If you ever buy anything, let me know that you're a watcher or a subscriber or whatever. And, um, you know make me an offer. I'd, I'll give you a lower price or whatever. Right now I'm just selling mostly stuff from around my house, but eventually as I get through with all the stuff that's just laying around that needs to, that I need to get rid of, then I'm going to continue to like, really like seek out books to sell that that's going to be my, 
that's my thing. I don't ever think I'll do Amazon, but I like to sell on eBay and I like books. So, and I, I want to have an inventory of cozy mysteries. That's what I really want. I mean, I'll, <clears throat> I'll sell other books too, but I would like to, you know, have a lot of cozy mysteries in my inventory. So oh. she, she said, you should listen to more storm. Oh, for the uh, Castleton library. Yeah. yeah. I probably yeah. Really yeah. Next year. Okay. Since I started it, I need to try to, that's a goal. If I start something, I need to at least read a couple more in the series. I got to like. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, we're going back to talking about the, um, I think this is still the Castle that's Library. Great. Yeah. Our cat does get a point of view sometimes, but I like it. Not cheesy. The setting. Yeah. It, it wasn't cheesy. It just took me off guard. <laughs> I was listening to it and it's like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I think Annie's would be a great sale on eBay because they're hard to find. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you guys get first dibs if anybody wants them. All right, book of the month. That's what I thought. So I think Guidepost and Annie's both kind of operate the same kind of deal. You you would subscribe to a series and you would get one a month for however long you want to keep that series going. Oh, I got one more. Thanks so much for this website. Oh, good. Yeah, you talk about Book Sale Finder. It's a great yeah, website. Yeah. People are selling the Castleton Manor Library books for 10 and over 20 a piece on Amazon. So great sale. Um, okay, good. Good deal. Thank you for looking that up. Castleton Manor Library books are not on ebook, or I would have finished the series already. Okay, so how have you been reading them? From uh, on audio, I guess? Did you yeah, say I think she read all the ones on that were on audio, but if the, there are more of them come on audio, she would finish it out, but there's only okay. so many of them. Yeah. Um, I will link my eBay store. And right now there is a link. If you look on my channel, Liz, uh, on this channel, um, go, you'll have to scroll back a little bit, but I have two different videos that say Lizzie Faye, they're called Lizzie Faye sells on eBay episode one and two. And my eBay store link is in both of those videos. So I don't usually link it to every video, but for those uh, on those, I will. And I need to do, I have a bunch of footage for episode three and I just haven't had time to do it. Oh, cool. <sighs> Okay, that is it. How many hours have we been here now? I don't even know. Almost, oh, almost, almost seven. seven. Okay, well, so not really any longer than a than a sprint for you guys. No, we just didn't get any <laughs> sprinting done. <laughs> but that was fun. Thank you so much yeah, for joining me for that. You got a lot um, of good books there. That yeah, was, you did. You had a lot of good books. I'm excited. I'm excited about them. And I do have just for um, I want to hear about what you guys have coming up. Um, I do have some more book calls coming up. I'm going to do one probably tomorrow of the Christmas books, Christmas theme books that I have collected over the past uh, couple months through the fall. And then I'm going to just probably put all the rest together in a miscellaneous haul and do that probably the next day. I've got a couple tags I want to do that I've seen Leanne do. One of them, I think it was a book addiction tag. I think you did that one. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And one that Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot did of 1001 books tag. I want to do those sometime this week. And um, I've got a couple of other ideas of things tossing around in my head. So I've got stuff coming up. So what do you guys have coming up? Tiffany, I know you said you just filmed something today mm -hmm. about, was it Christmas themed books? Yeah. So yeah. I have a part one because there's so many um, Christmas books, of course, um, but of a spotlight for Christmas cozies. And then um, I think that I'm going to do a vlog this week. Um, and then as far as events that we have the regular stuff, but on um, coming up in beginning of January, I said that I had the, the one and then I have Julianne Lindsay coming on the 16th. Nice. Nice. What about you? Hey, I know you have your readathon coming up with the Mary Poppins readathon. So everybody go check out the prompts for that. That's in January. I'm currently in the middle of filming a very boring vlog. <laughs> oh, I, I have it's a not really boring. I have a Christmas special video coming up, and then the last week of the year, I am off from work, so I'm going to put up a video every day. Okay. Cool. Very good. I will probably do one every day this week for sure. So, all right, Storm, what have you got coming up? I need to uh, do a video wrapping up last week because I, I, I started to try to do like a vlog, but I just, I didn't read that much. And so it was like, I didn't have anything to say. And then whenever I'm like, you know what? I could just do a weekly wrap up and it would probably be better. <laughs> so I like scratched that. I'm just going to do that. And so I still have to film that because I haven't done it. And then I would like to do a Christmas tag, I think. 
Well, are there any out there? Or are you going to come up yeah, with your make um, an original one? Mr. Francie Reeves uh, did a Christmas tag, yeah. and it sounded fun, so I'll try it. Nice. Yeah, that's fun. I like that. Yeah. Oh, and I probably will do a mid-month wrap-up this week as well. Nice. All right. So we got a few more comments. First, we on audiobook on Hoopla. Good. I will definitely check those out. Thank you, Bella. Appreciate it. My husband started it a few years ago, and um, he was... Uh, he wasn't having time because he still works full time. Um, his dad, my father-in-law has an eBay store and he's had it for several years and has done really well with it. And so he kind of, you know, got my husband excited to do it. And so that kind of got me excited to do it because we have all these things that, you know, my, after my mom died, I brought a bunch of stuff home, a lot of vintage stuff and all that. And literally though, when my husband started taking pictures I was like, oh, this looks hard. This is like before we had a good digital camera and all that stuff. And then he's like, well, I'll take the pictures and you do the descriptions. Here, sit down at the computer and do these descriptions. I would have rather had my teeth pulled out. It was <laughs> awful. And I was like, I do not want to do this. So I about all I did for the next few years was acquire things. I said, here, you can sell this. And then when he would wrap up a package, he would sell something and wrap it up. And I would take it to the post office the next day. So I had the beginning and the end of the process and he did everything else. <laughs> so the eBay did a, a thing earlier this year where they changed, they sort of separated from PayPal and they wanted, um, they have now what they call managed payments where they, they put the money directly into your bank account. And he's like, I may just quit. I'm not giving eBay our bank account. I don't want to do that. And so I kind of thought about that for a little bit. And I was like, well, I'm retired now. Maybe I could wrap my head around doing the listings again. You know, maybe I could make myself do it because I don't want him to, I didn't want him to quit. I had, you know, too many things to sell. <clears throat> and um, so I happen to have this other little bank account in another bank, totally separate from all of our family life savings. And, um, and I was like, what if we use that account and everything and I'll take it over and everything I make will go into a kitchen renovation fund. And he's like, okay. So that's what we did. And he still helps out a little bit, you know, here and there. Um, but, uh, and he, he, super supportive of it and everything. Uh, he just didn't want to give eBay access to our, you know, our whole life savings. <laughs> so uh, it works out and, um, and I really enjoyed it. It's still true that the listings are the hardest part, but it's not that hard once you get into it. Uh, it's just a matter of making yourself do it. So my goal is five listings a day and I haven't done, uh, I did really good in September and October. Um, and, and semi okay in November, but in December I've kind of fallen off the wagon a little bit, and I got to get back into. And I even have Christmas stuff that I still need to list, but it's kind of late now. But anyway, I've been watching reseller videos. I fell down a rabbit hole of YouTubers who are resellers, and um, there's some really good ones out there. And it's fun to see what you know what people are selling and reselling and all of that. So anyway, I didn't mean to get off on all that. So let's see. Rose says, great haul, Elizabeth. Hope you get to read some of these cozies next year. Yes. You made me excited to get to some of those series soon. Yes. And that's why I wanted you guys to be here with me to just help me, uh, you know, help me and everybody else get excited about, about them. So she's Bella's here for all the Christmas reads. Good deal. Um, Elizabeth, I put a 2021 reading year, 10 questions. Oh yes, I saw it. I just haven't had time to go and look up what my answers will be. So on discord, if you haven't answered it, it's fun to see everyone's answers. Tiffany needs to do it too. <laughs> yeah. I just have to go back and look. I have to have my good reads open. I, uh, I think I saw that when I was somewhere else where I didn't uh, have access to it. So yes, thanks for reminding me. I will get that done. Uh, you guys can make a video for the questions if that's easier. Oh, that might be easier. I might that. Yeah. <laughs> okay anybody else have anything you want to add or say anybody else in the chat want to say anything thank you so much for being here thank you for having me on yes yeah, I'm thank so glad for thank you very it. much for the invite it was a lot of fun yeah, oh even trying to talk about cozies is fun to me <laughs> yes I, in fact um you know i've been trying to now that we've done this um whenever i get to the binge my bookshelf uh, when I do my cozies, I could move my computer into my shelves where I have my cozies and we could even just do a cozy bookshelf tour. If you guys want to come on and, and y'all can look That's through my good. shelves with me. 
and help that me figure out nice. help me figure out what to read and what to binge. Nice. So that would yeah, be that'd be fun. Yeah, if you want to. Okay, very good. Thanks so much, everyone. Let me put my glasses back on so I can see what we're doing. Okay, everyone out there watching, thank you so much for being here. I know a lot of people yeah. have come and gone. We've been here three hours, but um, it was great. Thanks so much. And uh, if anybody does know how, uh, maybe I can. Um, uh, you might want to go out. back. And, you might want to go back and watch it. You, there might not be anything to see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll see. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great Bye, day. everyone. Bye. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Happy Elizabeth. Year. Happy Christmas. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.